the globe at this time sababu ambayo bwana amenisababisha kuja kwenu kote kote katika ulimwengu wote mzima kwa wakati huu is because of the prophecy i gave ni kwa sababu ya unabii nilioupeana i gave a prophecy december 1 nilipeana unabii tarehe moja december the year 2015 mwaka wa 2015 I gave the prophecy of the corona virus. Nilipeana unabii wa virusi vya corona. When I said, Niliposema, there is a big disease coming to the earth. Kuna ugonjwa kubwa kabisa ambalo linakuja duniani. And I said, Nikasema, that, that disease would come from Asia. Ya kwamba hilo gonjwa litotokea Asia. And I gave the finer details. Na nikapeana vipengee hasa kabisa. And I saw a lot of people being rushed to hospital. Na nikawaona watu wengi kabisa wakikimbizwa hospitalini. And I saw that as they were being rushed there there was lack of equipment. Na nikaona ya kwamba wakati walipokuwa wanakimbizwa huko hakukuwepo na vifaa. And also I saw that hospitals were overwhelmed, over flooded. Na nikaona pia mahospitali zilikuwa zimefurika kabisa. And I said, Nikasema that it would create tremendous disease distress ya kwamba itatokea dhiki kubwa kabisa inayotokana na gonjwa hilo and also na pia i said there would be need for culture i used the words culture nikasema kwamba kutakuwepo na hitaji la kufanya utafiti and all other details of that prophecy na vipengee vyote vingine vya unabii huo and i mentioned india by name na nikataja india kwa jina in that prophecy katika huo unabii and you see that more than four years later na mnaona ya kwamba baada ya miaka minne then that prophecy is fulfilled sasa unabii huo unatimilizwa and then you begin to understand sasa unaanza kuelewa the enormity and the gravity of those words uzito na ukuu wa maneno hayo when finally the coronavirus has appeared from asia hatimaye wakati virusi vya corona vimetokea asia and is going all over the earth na inaenda kote kote duniani and death has consumed the whole earth kifo kimeteka nyara ulimwengu wote mzima so that is the prophecy that i have been looking at hivyo huo ndio unabii ambao nimekuwa nikiangazia for two months now kwa miezi miwili sasa every day an evening service kila siku ibada ya jioni to bring to you the revelation kuwaletea ufunuo and the instruction that is embedded in that prophecy na maagizo ambayo yamewekezwa katika unabii huo but i keep saying lakini ninaendelea kusema that in the four years when that prophecy was lying there in the web ya kwamba kwa miaka minne ambapo unabii huo ulikuwa tu pale katika huo mtandao i wonder how many of you revisited with it inside the web there na shangani watu wangapi wenu ambao walienda kusikiliza tena katika huo mtandao because those words kwa sababu hayo maneno had such a huge potency yalikuwa na uzito mkuu kabisa their potential is unbelievable unfathomable uzito wake ni wa kutoaminika mkuu sana and you see now na mnaona sasa how they have gripped the whole earth and locked down the earth jinsi ambavyo yameshika ulimwengu wote mzima na kisha kufunga ulimwengu wote my words maneno yangu have changed life yamebadilisha maisha on the earth katika dunia forever milele those words i spoke more than four years ago hayo maneno niliyozungumza miaka 4 iliyopita are the word of god yahweh himself ni maneno ya mungu yahweh mwenyewe and so that is what we've been looking at hivyo hiyo ndio tumekuwa tukiangazia and as we looked at that prophecy na tulipoangazia huo unabii and the fulfillment globally na utimilifu wake kote kote duniani so you see it was not only asia kwa hivyo mnaona kwamba haikuwa tu asia and not only india na sio india tu peke yake but china bali uchina singapore singapore malaysia malaysia philippines philippines thailand thailand Taiwan Taiwan the whole world Ulimwengu wote mzima And so the words of God Hivyo maneno ya Mungu You can now see for yourselves Sasa mnaweza kujionea How the Lord speaks Jinsi Mungu anavyonena So that is what I've been bringing to you Hivyo hicho ndicho nimekuwa nikiwaletea for the past few weeks kwa majuma kadhaa yaliyopita and today we are going to advance the revelation the conversation na leo hii tunaenda kuendeleza ufunuo mazungumzo but before we go there lakini kabla tuende huko i want to mention ninataka kutaja 
the a, a second prophecy pili, that I gave last year around April mwaka ya pata mwezi aprili, when I said posema, because the world is blackmailing me kwa sababu ulimwengu katika kudhihaki bwana and malicing the lord na kumtukana bwana and not listening to my words na kutosikiliza maneno yangu my instruction to repent maagizo yangu kwa kutubu and turn away from sin na kugeuka kutoka kwa dhambi and prepare for the coming of the messiah and i say nikasema that because they are not listening ya kwamba kwa sababu hawasikilizi then the locust is coming basi nzige wanakuja the plague of locust pigo la nzige is coming linakuja and you see how that prophecy was fulfilled a few months later na muona jinsi ambavyo unabii huo ulitimilizwa miezi michache baadaye december came january of this year the locusts appeared Desemba kuelekea Januari mwaka huu nzige wakaja. And I said nikasema that the Lord is using these prophecies. Ya kwamba Bwana anazitumia hizi unabii. The coronavirus. Virusi vya corona. And its fulfillment. Na utimilifu wake. And the locusts. Na nzige. And the fulfillment. Na utimilifu wake. The Lord is using them. Bwana anazitumia to identify me to you. Kuwatambulisha hawa manabii wawili kwenu. That you may get to know who are these prophets. Who is this prophet that is double? Ili kwamba tupate kujua je, huyu ni nabii yupi ambaye amefanywa maradufu? You don't find it in the Bible. Hauipati katika Biblia. And the voice said. Na sauti ikasema that even before the Messiah came. Ya kwamba hata kabla Masiya aje. They were two. Walikuwa wawili. They were doubled. Walikuwa maradufu. Except that he closed their eyes. Ila tu alifunga macho yao. They could not see. Hawangeweza kuona. But this generation. Lakini hiki kizazi. So beloved. Kimependwa sana. And the Lord. Na ye Bwana. Open their eyes to see. Akafungua macho yao kuona. The Lord has done a lot. Bwana amefanya mengi. To try to reach out to a generation. Kujaribu kufikia kizazi. And that's why today. Ndio sababu leo hii. We want to advance the conversation. Tunataka kuendeleza mazungumzo. Of the instruction. Ya maagizo. That the coronavirus. Ambayo virusi vya corona. And the locust that you see the global media. Na ndige ambao mnaona vyombo vyote vya kimataifa. Right now. Sasa hivi. They are covering the coronavirus. Wanaangazia virusi vya corona. But then. Lakini sasa. The, the media have started mentioning locusts. Ya vyombo vya habari wameanza kutaja ndige. They have started saying that a huge historic swarm of locusts, a plague is coming to devastate the land wameanza kusema ya kwamba nzige wengi 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 kabisa wanakuja wa kihistoria wanakuja kuharibu ulimwengu to devastate africa kuharibu africa but not just africa lakini sio africa tu because they're in pakistan they're in india then china Kwa... then latin america they are global now kwa sababu wako Pakistan, wako India, wako Latin America kote kote sasa. And so you find. Kwa hivyo unapata ya kwamba the Lord is revealing the two prophets differently. Ya kwamba Bwana anawafunua hawa manabii wawili vitofauti. You find that one is commanding heaven to open Una, and in one minute rain comes down. Unapata ya kwamba mmoja anaamrisha mbingu kufunguka na kisha chini ya dakika moja mvua inanyesha. The prophet of Mount Carmel nabii wa mlima karmeli that was promised to you ambaye aliyeidiwa kwenu the one that is in the forefront is in the forefront of the mission yeye ambaye yuko mbele katika huduma katika tume and then halafu suddenly you find the other one ghafla unampata yule mwingine the other one that now brings the locusts yeah. and the plagues huyo ambaye analeta nzige na mapigo and then you understand sasa mnaelewa that each one of them has a wrath ya kwamba kila mmoja wao ana ghadhabu but you see now after the cloud comes lakini mnaona sasa baada ya wingu kuja to visit the second one kumtembelea yule wa pili the one that has been in the background yeye ambaye amekuwa kinyuma after december 22nd baada ya december tarehe 22 when the cloud that i called from heaven Wha when i called yahweh i said my friend come and visit me wakati ambapo wingu ambalo niliita kutoka mbinguni wakati nilipomwita yawe nikasema kwamba rafiki wangu njoo unitembelee December 22nd 
2019 that prophecy was fulfilled when finally God the Father did the unthinkable the unimaginable something that he only did in the Old Testament when he finally came a man, a man called him and he came these are wonders. Historic wonders. He only did that like more than 3,000 years away. And then now he did it in Kisumu. But you see that ever since I called Yahweh to come in the ancient cloud, the God of Israel, and visit me, the God of Israel. Mungu wa Israeli. And then he came. Na kisha akaja. And settled on top of the tent where I was preaching in Kisumu. Na akatua juu ya hema ambapo nilikuwa ninahubiri Kisumu. In a cloud, in, in a funnel like massive cloud. Katika wingu kama wingu ambalo liko kama faneli wingu kuzito kabisa. And he ensured. Na kisha aka hakikisha. He ensured that he was coming from the horizon. Alikuwa na ali hakikisha kwamba alikuwa na tokea katika upeo wa macho. And he's so huge, bigger than the lake, bigger than the city. Na yeye ni mkubwa sana, mkubwa kuliko ziwa, mkubwa kuliko mji. And you can tell that he wanted people to see him coming. Coming to his prophets. In other words saying, I have been called and I have come and then settled on the tent. But what I want to raise here today, the visitation of the cloud, ever since he came and visited his servant, and you know that there is only one servant that he visits in that cloud. There is only one prophet of Israel that he visits in that ancient cloud. But when he came in that cloud, December 22nd, 2019, ever since then, everything changed. Kila kitu the judgments of these prophets changed. Za hawa manabi, zili badilika. They became more ferocious. Zika wakali kabisa kabisa. They became more dreadful. Zika waza kutisha sana zaidi. For example, shut down the sun. Kwa mfano kuzimisha jua. December 26th. December. Shut down the sun. Kuzimisha jua. They became global phenomena. Zikafanyika matukio ya ulimwengu wote mzima. And then locusts. Kisha nzige. Global phenomena. Tukio la ulimwengu wote. And coronavirus. Kisha virusi vya corona. Global phenomena. Tukio la ulimwengu wote mzima. The judgments have become harsher. Hizo hukumu zimefanyika kali kabisa. Much harsher. Za kali kabisa kabisa. Everybody can tell. Kila mtu anaweza kutambua. And so the Lord is speaking to a generation. Before we go back to the seals, I already told you that when I gave the prophecy of the coronavirus, and coronavirus came to the earth, I said, that the Lord is speaking with the generation. And is telling them that the rider of the fourth horse, the rider of the fourth horse of the apocalypse, the one that brings the coronavirus, together with the other Riders, his other three fellow riders. Pamoja na wale wapanda farasi wengine watatu. 
the four horsemen of the apocalypse that I have prophesied across time. On every occasion, the Lord took me to his throne in heaven and showed me the opening, the breaking of the seal of the scroll of God. The first one, the ride of the white horse. The second one, the rider of the red horse. The third one, the black horseman. And the fourth one, the rider of the pale horse. And I said that the rider of the pale horse is the one that brings the coronavirus. And his name is death. And that's why you see there is a lot of death all over the world. Death, death, dead bodies just being thrown into trucks. Ndio sababu sasa hivi mnaona ya kwamba kuna vifo vingi kabisa kabisa vifo 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 kote kote duniani na mili maiti inatupwa tu katika malori. And I said. Nikasema that the message out of there. Ya kwamba ujumbe unaotokana hapo. To this generation, the present day generation. Kwa kizazi hiki, kizazi cha sasa. The Lord is saying that these riders of the four horsemen of, of, of the apocalypse they operate in the tribulation and the great tribulation but if you now see that they have greeted the earth a little bit they have spilled over before the rapture a little bit to greet you, to greet the earth. In other words, to warn you. All this is by design by Yahweh. And that's why you see I give the prophecy and then they take place. But he's saying by greeting the dispensation before the rapture, right before the rapture. And show them such a tremendous distress. The institution of the beginning of birth pains. The message is clear. The Lord is saying, from the coronavirus that the nations of the earth they need to repent a global repentance a world repentance a universal repentance and return to Jesus why? because he's saying if they have begun their ministration ministry then for sure the coming of the Messiah is very near. Then for sure the church is about to be taken. The rapture of the church is about to take place. And that you need to prepare and that whosoever you are tuned in today globally the message from the coronavirus that I prophesied when Yahweh spoke with me and told me to come and strike the earth and now fulfilled and now the one who prophesied is the one speaking with you. And giving you the instruction. And that's why you find that inside that prophecy I said that ensure that when this prophecy is fulfilled just make sure that your name is found written in the Lamb's book of life. 
ya kwamba jina lako limepatikana limeandikwa kwenye kitabu cha uzima cha mwana kondoo because then you know the messiah is coming kwa sababu hapo mwajua ya kwamba masia anakuja and so when i'm talking to a generation kwa hivyo wakati ninazungumza na kizazi i'm talking to you ninazungumza nanyi at the time kwa wakati when the rapture has not yet happened ambapo unyakuzi haujatendeka remember i have seen the coming of the messiah kumbuka nimeona kuja kwa masia remember kumbuka that i have gone to lima peru ya kwamba nimeenda lima peru i went to palermo italy nilienda palermo italy and i gave the prophecy live on television camera like this na nikapeana unabii huo moja kwa moja kwenye kamera za runinga namna hii when i said niliposema so that if the lord has sent you the servant of malachi 4 ya kwamba iwapo bwana amemtumia nabii amewatumia nabii wa malaki sura ya 4 if he's already operating on the earth ikiwa sasa hivi anajiendeleza tayari katika ulimwengu then his stripes are in the bible hivyo basi anawakika katika biblia the bible is our reference biblia ndio kitu chetu cha kurifaa and i ask them what are his stripes na nikauliza je alama zake ni zipi if in his first coming iwapo katika kuja kwake kwa kwanza he commanded heaven aliamrisha mbingu and heaven opened on mount carmel na mbingu zikafunguka katika mlima carmel and rain wow came down na kisha mvua ikanyesha even now then hata sasa basi regardless of the modernism haijalishi usasa he has to stand in a place ni lazima asimame mahali in the public Uhadharani. in the broad sunny summer day wakati wa mchana jioni kiwaka where the weathermen said they will not be rain for a long time mahali ambapo watabiri wa hali ya anga walisema kwamba hakutakuepo na mvua kwa muda mrefu and stand there in the eyes of everybody publicly na kusimama pale machoni pa kila mtu hadharani and speak to heaven na kuzungumza na mbingu and heaven must obey na mbingu lazima itii and so i said in palermo italy kwa hivyo nikasema palermo italy that i am headed to lima peru ya kwamba ninaelekea lima peru but when i arrive there lakini nikifika huko in the healing service katika mkutano wa uponyaji i will stand nitasimama and command heaven to open and bring rain now na kuamrisha mbingu kufunguka na kunyesha mvua sasa you know that time mwajua kwa wakati I was not even aware that Lima Peru is the third driest second second driest city in the world. Sikuwa nimejua ya kwamba Lima Peru the second most desert city in the world. Sikujua ya kwamba Lima Peru ndio mji ambao ni kiangazi wa pili kote kote duniani. All I remember. Yote nikumbukayo. Is when I entered the hotel room I arrived and entered the hotel room in Lima Peru. Ni kwamba nilipofika na nikaingia katika chumba cha hoteli Lima Peru. And I was so tired so I fell asleep. Na nilikuwa nimechoka kabisa hivyo nikalala. The Lord showed me. Bwana akanionyesha that the sky is a concrete. Ya kwamba anga ni simiti and uh, uh, then he, he dented a little part like you knock like this and just a little piece comes out na kisha nika, kama vile unagonga namna hii na kisha akafanya na, na kisha akafanya namna hii akagonga kidogo na kisha kipande kidogo kikatoka namna hii a concrete simiti he showed me that the sky is a concrete alinionyesha kwamba anga ni simiti in the dream katika ndoto so i met the journalists in lima peru hivyo basi nikakutana na wale wana habari lima peru and they asked me na wakaniuliza tell us tuambie the senior pastors came the fellow the, 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 the national council of bishops and pastors who were hosting me they came wachungaji wa ngazi za juu walikuja lile baraza la maskofu ambao walikuwa wamenikaribisha walikuja with journalists pamoja na wanahabari so the journalists had an interview session with me hivyo basi wale wanahabari wakafanya kikao cha mahojiano pamoja nami like we do in every country kama vile tufanya hivyo katika kila nchi and one of them stood up na mmoja wapo akasimama and he asked na akauliza now that you've come sasa kwamba umekuja what is it that is going to happen to lima peru je ni nini ambacho kinaenda kutendeka kwa lima peru And I looked at him. Na nikamwangalia. And I said my son. Na nikasema mwanangu. What is going to happen to Lima Peru? Kile ambacho kinaenda kutendeka kwa Lima Peru. Because I have come. Kwa sababu nimekuja. Is already on the web. Tayari kiko katika mtandao. I gave the prophecy in Kenya. Nilipeana unabii Kenya. And also in Italy. Na pia Italy. And so na kwa hivyo they were aware they had read it that's why they were asking me they wanted to hear it from me walijua walikuwa wameisoma ndio sababu walikuwa wanataka kuisikia kutoka kwangu and so i said na kwa hivyo nikasema that my son ya kwamba mwanangu your question should have been 
When those things promised when the visitation that I have promised coming to Lima, Peru does take place. What will be the people what will the people of Peru do with it? In other words, mengine, I told him, muambia, look at Kenya. Kenya. When the heavens opened in Kenya, I commanded heaven open and rain came down. Look at the revival there. Wakati mbingu zilifunguka Kenya, niliamrisha mbingu kufunguka na mvua ikanyesha. Tazama uvuvio huko Kenya. When heavens open in Kenya. Wakati mbingu zilipofunguka Kenya. Everybody is running for righteousness, for holiness, for repentance. They are preparing for the glorious kingdom of Yahweh. Kila mtu anakimbilia uhaki, kila mtu anakimbilia utakatifu, anakimbilia toba, wanajiandaa kwa ajili ya kuja kwa utukufu kwa Yahweh. She is a superstar. Kenya is a superstar because of that conduct. Kenya ni kitaifa ambalo ni la kilele kabisa kwa sababu ya tabia hiyo. That is all that matters to the Lord. Hicho ndicho kinachojalisha tu kwa Bwana. That when the prophecy come, ya kwamba unabii unapokuja, you must change your conduct. Ni lazima ubadilishe tabia yako. And tune to the prophecy. Na kisha uambatane na unabii huu. Even the Egyptian Pharaoh hata farao wa Misri When Joseph gave him the prophecy Wakati Yosefu alipompatia unabii The entire Egypt and all these country pagans they changed their conduct Misri yote taifa ambalo ni la wakafiri watu wasioamini walibadilisha tabia zao They began to build big stones Wakaanza kujenga magala makubwa Began to prepare now to save Wakaanza kujiandaa sasa kuwekeza How about you now Je vipi kuhusiana na nyinyi sasa And so I asked him Kwa When the visitation I promise will take place in Lima, Peru, what will the people of Lima, Peru do with? Wakati with ambapo mtembeleo niliyoahidi Lima, Peru utakapotimia, je, watu wa Peru wataifanyia nini? Then the day came. Kisha siku ikawadia. And I stood there. Nami nikasimama hapo. All over the web. It's, It, it's, it's on the web. Everybody knows this. Iko kote kote kwenye mtandao kila mtu anajua haya. I spoke with God. Wakati nilizungumza na Mungu. And, and it's so dry. Na ilikuwa imekauka kabisa. And I could see that the faces of people the Lord makes me know what everybody is thinking. They had no faith. They're like, "Oh, this is a hard one." Na ningeli like, this is a hard one. Na ningeliweza kuona nyuso za watu Bwana alinisababisha nijue kile ambacho wanafikiria walikuwa na waza ya kwamba hii ni ngumu kabisa. Mm, this one this, this one is gonna be a hard one for this guy. <laughs> hii hii inaenda kuwa ngumu kabisa kwa mtu huyo. So I could get to know what the pastor so many of them came and sat there. Kwa hivyo ningeliweza kujua kutambua kile ambacho wachungaji wengi kabisa walikuja na kukaa hapo. But then in the moment lakini ghafla bidvu Lord Bwana We are waiting for you here. Tunakungojea hapa. To open heaven. Kufungua mbingu. And bring rain. Na kunyesha mvua. Then wa. Kisha kukanyesha. Then the rain came down. Kisha mvua ikanyesha. Tremendous in Lima Peru. Ya ajabu kabisa Lima Peru. And so I said in Italy. Kwa hivyo nikasema Italy. That if the Lord has sent the servant of Malachi chapter 4 ya kwamba iwapo Bwana amemtuma mtumishi wa kitabu cha Malaki sura ya 4. His stripes are in the Bible. Alama zake ziko katika Biblia. Whether this is 2020. Iwe huu ni mwaka 2020. He has to do the things that he promised would be done. Lazima afanye mambo ambayo yaliahidiwa ya kwamba yatafanyika. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this is the backdrop, the background. Hivyo basi huu ndio uwepo. In which now the Amba, coronavirus has come. Ambapo sasa virusi vya corona vimekuja. And so the Lord is saying. Hivyo basi Bwana anasema. There are few things here we need to put together. Kuna mambo machache hapa ambayo tutahitaji kuweka pamoja. Before we go back to the sixth seal. Kabla turudi tena katika lakiri ya sita. There are few things here. Kuna mambo machache hapa. That speak about time. Ambayo yanazungumza kuhusiana na wakati. First of all. Kwanza kabisa. It all like I've said appears to have been ignited December 22nd Kisumu when the cloud came. Kwanza kabisa yote yaonekana kwa ilianzia tarehe 22 Desemba wakati wingu liliposhuka. Kisumu Kenya. Kisumu Kenya. Why does the Lord come? Je, ni kwa nini Bwana huja? Let me just enlighten you a little bit here. Wacha nikaweze kuangazia kidogo hapa. 
God normally pursues a pro, his his prophetic timeline. Kila wakati Bwana huyafuatilia majira yake ya kiunabii. And in his prophetic timeline. Na katika majira yake ya kiunabii. He has demarcations on the timeline. Ameweka vipindi kwa ajili ya majira hayo. When a time reaches when he has to make a move on the earth. Wakati unafika ambapo ni lazima afanye muondoko katika ulimwengu. The time reaches he has to execute install an agenda a new agenda on the earth. Wakati unafika ambapo lazima akaweze kutekeleza ajenda mpya katika dunia. And all these programs all these agendas are for revival. Na hizi ajenda zote ni kwa ajili ya uvuvio. They essentially for repentance. Kimsingi ni kwa toba. To bring his people back to him. Kuwaleta watu wake kumrudia. And so many times when the time has arrived. Hivyo basi mara nyingi wakati unapotimia for the Lord to execute an agenda. Kwa Bwana kutekeleza agenda. Towards the glorious coming of the Messiah. Kuelekea kuja kwa utukufu kwa Masiya. There are two ways in which he can do it. Kuna njia mbili ambazo anaweza kuifanya. Number one. Ya kwanza the Lord can come and establish an agency. Bwana anaweza kuja na kuimarisha wakala. To, to put to establish an agency. Kuwekeza kuimarisha wakala. Yes, to, to put in place an agency. Kumuweka wakala. The Lord can establish an agency. Bwana anaweza kumuweka wakala. But when he establishes an agency. Lakini anapoweka wakala based on the type of mission kuzingatia ile aina ya tume hiyo and based on the agenda to be accomplished na kuzingatia ile agenda ya kutimilizwa on the earth duniani normally when he establishes that office kwa kawaida wakati anapowekeza hiyo ofisi then he gives that office the authority hapo basi anaipatia hiyo afisi mamlaka he gives that agency the authority Anapatia huyo wakala mamlaka to execute that mission. Ya kutekeleza mishoni hiyo. And so, na kwa hivyo, when the Lord wakati Bwana establishes an agency on the earth. Anapoweka wakala katika dunia because the prophetic timeline has arrived. Kwa sababu majira ya kiunabii yamefika. To perform a certain agenda on the earth. Ili kutekeleza ajenda fulani katika dunia. Like revival. Kama uvuvio. Or prepare the way. Ya kuandaa njia. Based on the type of mission, the Kuz- type of the type of duty. Kuzingatia ile wajibu, aina ya wajibu. The objective to be achieved. Lengo ili la kupatikana. Then he anoints the agency. Hivyo anampaka mafuta huyo wakala. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, he authorizes that office, that agency on the earth. Yeye anatia mamlaka katika afisi hiyo duniani. And when he gives that agency that authority to do that mission for him. Na wakati anapompatia huyo wakala hayo mamlaka ya kufanya hiyo huduma kwa ajili yake. When that agency begins to do the mission of the Lord for which He has been brought. Wakati ambapo huyo wakala anapoanza kufanya tume ya Bwana ambayo kwayo ameletwa. You and I wewe na mimi will see the anointing. Uta, tutaona upako. You see him executing but you see the anointing. Unaona akitekeleza lakini tunaona upako. That is essentially the authority that God has given that agency to execute the mission. Hiyo kimsingi ni mamlaka ambayo Bwana amempatia huyo wakala kutekeleza wajibu huo. It is like a country. Ni kama taifa setting up a foreign office an embassy in another country. Ikituma nje ubalozi katika taifa lingine. That's why the country normally gives the ambassador there that that embassy enough authority to execute that mission ndio sababu kwa kawaida taifa humpatia huo ubalozi mamla ya kutosha ili kwamba kutekeleza hiyo tume for example if the people in that country want to have business investments in in in, in Kenya kwa, they, they, they go there and that embassy has sufficient authority to handle that that mission kwa mfano iwapo watu katika taifa hilo wanataka kuwa na mawekezo ya kibiashara katika hilo taifa hiyo ubalozi ina nguvu za katika kutosha katika Kenya tafadhali ubalozi wa Kenya Ka, kama kwa mfano kama yeah, vile kama kwa mfano kama vile hiyo ta, watu hao wanataka kutekeleza hiyo kuwekeza kwa kibiashara katika Kenya hivyo basi ubalozi huo katika Kenya unaopatia ubalozi huo uinje huko tafadhali kwa jina la Yesu 
Hivyo basi ubalozi huo katika hiyo nchi nyingine inawapatia hiyo mamlaka. Imepatiwa. Tafadhali. So so let, let us move here. So the Lord is saying Bwana anasema that there are two ways in which he executes a mission. Ya kwamba kuna njia mbili ambayo anatekeleza huduma. Number one Jambo la kwanza depending on the type of agenda mission the lord wants to bring on the earth kuzingatia ile aina ya agenda misheni ambayo bwana anataka kuleta duniani normally he can establish an agency on the earth to represent him kwa kawaida anaweza kumtuma wakala katika dunia ili kumwakilisha and when he does establish that agency on the earth to represent him na wakati anapomtuma huyo wakala katika dunia ili kumwakilisha kum, Then he gives that agency authority to do that mission. Hivyo basi anampatia huyo wakala mamlaka ya kufanya hiyo tume. And when that agency begins to do that duty, that mission. Na kwa hivyo wakati huyo wakala anapoanza kufanya hiyo wajibu, hayo majukumu. You and I. Wewe na mimi. Will see the anointing of God upon the life of that office, that agency. Tutaona upako wa Mungu juu ya maisha ya huyo wakala. And when he does the mission Na anapofanya hiyo misheni Look at this now Angalia hii sasa When he does the mission you see the anointing for example cripples are walking Anapofanya hiyo huduma kwa mfano unaona upako kwa mfano viwete wanatembea For example strike with earthquakes Kwa mfano akigonga na matetemeko ya ardhi You see the blind seeing Tunaona vipofu wakiona Resurrected dead Kufufua wafu So kwa hivyo depending on the manifestation kutegemea udhihirisho the manifestation of the anointing upon the life of that agency udhihirisho wa upako juu ya maisha ya huyo wakala you can see unaweza kuona how close jinsi ambavyo yuko karibu how close that agency is walking with god jinsi ambavyo kwa ukaribu kabisa huyo wakala anatembea na mungu you can also tell pia unaweza kutambua if that agency is far away from god iwapo huyo wakala yuko mbali na mungu because then you will not see much manifestation kwa sababu hapo basi hautaona kudhihirisho kwingi and again i'm saying tena ninasema that when the lord wants to do an agenda establish an agenda on the earth ya kwamba bwana anapotaka kuwekeza agenda katika dunia he can establish an agency anaweza kuimarisha wakala and authorize it na pia kumpatia mamlaka that is the anointing meaning he anoints that agency hii ni upako kumaanisha kwamba anampaka mafuta huyo wakala and then when that agency does the work na kisha wakala huyo anapofanya kazi then you see things hapo sasa unaona vitu like cripple walk blind see that is called manifestation of god in that agency kama vile viwete wakitembea vipofu wakiona hiyo inaitwa maudhihirisho wa upako wa Mungu katika wakala huyo in the life of that agency katika maisha ya wakala huyo and the, 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 the manifestation that is in that agency of god in that agency na kula kudhihirishwa ambao kwa Mungu ambako kuko katika ndani ya huyo wakala is essentially kimsingi the life of god that is in that person ni maisha ya mungu ambaye yako ndani ya huyo mtu and the power of god in that person na too. maisha ya mungu ambaye yako katika na nguvu za mungu ambazo ziko katika mtu huyo so when the lord establishes on the earth here an embassy an agency hivyo basi bwana anapoimarisha hapa duniani ubalozi wakala and he authorizes the agency anoints na kisha anampatia mamlaka kumpaka mafuta huyo wakala and that agency begins to do work na huyo wakala anaanza kufanya kazi depending on the type of manifestations kuzingatia aina ya udhihirisho you can tell unaweza kutambua how close that agency is walking with god the father himself jinsi ambavyo huyo wakala anatembea kwa ukaribu kabisa kabisa na mungu baba mwenyewe or how far ama jinsi alivyo mbali sana to this now nasikiliza hili sasa in other words he's saying kwa maneno mengine anasema that when the lord sends a prophet ya kwamba bwana anapomtuma nabii on the earth duniani and he authorizes him he anoints him na kisha anampatia mamlaka anampaka mafuta and he begins to do that agenda of god for which god has established him at that time na kisha anaanza kufanya hiyo agenda ya Mungu ambayo kwao Mungu amemuimarisha kwa wakati huo. Then you and I should see the manifestation of his ministry. Manifestation of God in his ministry. Hivyo basi wewe na mimi tupaswe kuona udhihirisho wa Mungu katika huduma yake. And when you see 
powerful manifestation. Like creepers that are pulling themselves on the soil. Baby njoki, precious njoki, pulling themselves on the soil, on the dust. Kama vile viwete ambao walikuwa wanajivuta katika mavumbi katika udongo kama getting up and walking wakinuka na kutembea creepers getting up and walking from the dust viwete wakinuka na kutembea kutoka kwa mavumbi and then blind seeing na kisha vipofu wakiona dead body resurrected maiti ikifufuka striking and repentant nations with earthquakes akigonga mataifa yasiyotubu kwa tetemeko la ardhi then you can tell hivyo basi unaweza kutambua how very close that agency is walking with god the father jinsi ambavyo kwa ukaribu kabisa huyo wakala anatembea na mungu and nobody can walk with god the father na hakuna mtu anayeweza kutembea na mungu baba nobody can be the friend of god the father and walk together hakuna mtu ambaye anaweza kuwa rafiki wa mungu baba na kutembea pamoja except ila tu that he be very very holy ila tu awe mtakatifu 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 holy mtakatifu kabisa kabisa if you see the type of manifestation ukiona aina ya udhihirisho you can tell unaweza kuona how holy that person is jinsi mtu huyo alivyo mtakatifu from the type of creepers he's raising kutoka kwa aina ya viwete anayewainua from the type of wonders he's calling god is visiting him is calling is doing things god from heaven is pointing on his head you can literally tell how close is walking with god the father kutoka kwa aina ya maajabu anayofanya anamuita mungu baba jehova kushuka, kushuka na kutembelea kwa kushuka kwa wingu lake na kisha anamtembelea Mungu Baba Jehova anakonyeza utukufu wake kutoka juu and walk with him live like this with the white glory on the head na kutembea moja kwa moja namna hii na utukufu mkuu mweupe wa Mungu Baba juu ya kichwa chake nobody can walk with God the Father except that he is very holy you have to be very very holy Hakuna you cannot describe that holiness in this life Hakuna mtu anayeweza kutembea na Mungu Baba isipokuwa tu. Uwe mtakatifu 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 sana uweze kuelezea utakatifu huo katika maisha haya. Because the Father is very holy. Kwa sababu Baba ni mtakatifu sana. That's why he sees sent his own son to be able to handle the matters of sin. Ndio sababu unaona kwamba alimtuma mwanao wa pekee ili kwamba akaweze kukabiliana na masuala ya dhambi. So if you see somebody sent na hivyo basi ukiona mtu ametumwa and is doing such mighty work na anafanya maajabu ya namna hiyo striking and repentant nations from here akiyagonga mataifa yasiyotubu kutoka hapa striking mount everest striking the andes mountains akigonga mlima wa everest akigonga milima ya andes raising creepers raising the dead akiwainua viwete akiwafufua wafu then you know hapo basi wajua that, that person is walking too close. Ya kwamba mtu huyo anatembea kwa ukaribu sana. With God the Father. Na Mungu Baba. And that can only mean. Na hiyo yaweza kutukumanisha. Ya kwamba huyo mtu is very holy. Ni mtakatifu sana. Because you cannot walk with God the Father. Kwa sababu hauwezi kutembea na Mungu Baba. Except you are holy. Isipokuwa tu wewe ni mtakatifu. So did you understand blessed people? Hivyo basi je mlielewe watu wabarikiwa? I thought I needed to raise for you some very important points on the visitation of December 22nd. Niliwaza ya kwamba nahitaji kuibulia vipengenyeti kabisa kabisa kuhusiana na ule mtembeleo wa December tarehe 22. That you may understand why all this has befallen the earth right now. Ili kwamba mpate kuelewa ni kwa nini haya yote yamekumba dunia sasa hivi. The coronavirus. Virusi vya corona. And now you have the locust. Na sasa mnazige. And it looks like they are perpetual, they are not stopping. Na inaonekana ya kwamba haikomi inaendelea. And so na kwa hivyo when God wants to establish to, to establish an agenda on the earth wakati bwana anapotaka kuimarisha agenda katika dunia he will come and establish an agency atakuja na kumuimarisha wakala and depending on the type of manifestations you see when that agency is doing the work na kuzingatia ule udhihirisho ambao mnaona wakati huyo wakala anapofanya kazi the type of manifestations aina ya udhihirisho then you can tell the level of the anointing on that person hivyo basi unaweza kutambua kiwango cha upako juu ya mtu huyo in other words kwa maneno mengine the amount of the life of god kiwango cha maisha ya mungu and the power of god na nguvu za mungu that god has deposited in the life of that person ambazo mungu amewekeza katika maisha ya mtu huyo that god has placed in that agency ambayo mungu ameweka katika huyo wakala But the second time Lakini jambo la pili When the Lord wants to establish 
an agenda on the earth. Wakati Bwana anataka kutekeleza agenda duniani Sometimes wakati mwingine depending on the mission itself the gravity of the mission Kuzingatia uzito wa hiyo tume Like one of them is here Kama vile moja wapo iko hapa In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 Kwenye kitabu cha Wathesalonike wa kwanza sura ya 16:17 16:17 For the Lord himself will come down from heaven Kwa maana Bwana mwenyewe atashuka toka mbinguni So depending on the gravity of the mission Hivyo basi kuzingatia uzito wa tume hiyo Then God the Father himself Hapo basi ba, Mungu Baba mwenyewe can come down. Anaweza kushuka chini. So the visitation in Kisumu was too big. Kwa hivyo mtembeleo wa Kisumu ulikuwa mkubwa kabisa. And that's why you see the coronavirus is here, you see the locusts is here, God the Father himself came. Ndio sababu unaona kwamba virusi vya corona viko hapa, pigo la nzigo ziko hapa, Mungu mwenyewe alishuka chini. Because it's about the coming of the Messiah. Kwa sababu inahusu kuja kwa Masiya. He says. Anasema, and God himself. Na Mungu mwenyewe. Will come down from heaven. Atashuka chini toka mbinguni. With a loud command. Akiwa na sauti kuu. With the voice of the archangel. Na sauti ya and the na sauti ya tarumbeta with a loud command na sauti ku with the voice of the archangel na sauti ya malaika mkuu with the trumpet call of god na sauti ku ya tarumbeta ya mungu and he says that the dead will be the first resurrected and be glorified na kisha anasema ya kwamba wao liolala katika mauti katika kristo watakuwa wa kwanza kufufuliwa na kupewa mwili ya utukufu after that the holy living christians will be translated to join them into the rapture and go to heaven baada ya hapo wa kristo ambao ni watakatifu watabadilishwa na kisha kuungana na wale ambao wanaenda mbinguni that mission Huduma hiyo is so critical ni nyeti kabisa that God the Father himself ya kwamba Mungu Baba mwenyewe has to come to his prophet ni lazima ashuke has to come to his prophet ni lazima washuke manabii wake on that mission katika huduma hiyo and so na kwa hivyo The reason I brought this is this. Sababu ambayo nilileta hii ni hii. That when the agenda is of such gravity. Ya kwamba wakati agenda ni ya uzito wa namna hii. Where God the Father himself must come. Ambapo Mungu Baba mwenyewe lazima ashuke. Then what you will see. Hapo basi kile ambacho utaona. Because God is the final authority. Kwa sababu Mungu ndiye mamlaka ya mwisho. He is the anointing authority. Yeye ndiye mamlaka yanayopaka mafuta. So he cannot anoint himself. Kwa hivyo basi hawezi kujipaka mafuta mwenyewe. God is the final anointing authority. Mungu ndiye mamlaka ya mwisho ya kuptia mafuta. So when he does the work. Hivyo anapofanya kazi. That mission. Hiyo tume. What you people see Kila ambacho ninyi watu mnaona is called the glory of God. Yaitwa utukufu wa Mungu. Other than the manifestation of God. Kando na ule udhihirisho wa Mungu. Now you see the glory of God himself. Sasa mnaona utukufu wa Mungu mwenyewe. And that is now called. Na sasa hiyo inaitwa the visitation of the Godhead. Mtembeleo wa Mungu Baba. The visitation of God the Father mtembeleo wa Mungu Baba and that visitation na mtembeleo huo has extreme gravity ina uzito mkuu kabisa and that's why you see the earth is where she is now ndio sababu unaona dunia iko mahali ilipo sasa and so i wanted to make that very clear to you ndio hivyo basi nilitaka kuiweka hiyo wazi kabisa kwenu and so you can see the mission we are discussing here today hivyo unaweza kuona ile tume ambayo tunazungumzia leo hii hapa the agenda of god that's being established on the earth agenda ya Mungu ambayo inaimarishwa katika dunia that the lord himself is involved ambayo bwana mwenyewe anahusika now blessed people sasa watu wabarikiwa we were talking about the sixth seal tulikuwa tunazungumza kuhusu lakiri ya sita that the coronavirus ya kwamba virusi vya corona is essentially speaking to a generation kimsingi inazungumza kwa kizazi and telling this generation na kuambia hiki kizazi that look at the distress ya kwamba angalia hii dhiki that has come out of this prophecy ambayo imetokana na unabii huu but understand lakini elewa that a dispensation is about to enter ya kwamba majira yako karibu kuingia when this type of distress will be up wakati ambapo aina hii ya dhiki itaendelezwa katika kiwango cha juu it will be up itaendelezwa katika kiwango cha juu if this is already this serious iwapo hii ni kali namna hii tayari then how much more hivyo basi itakuwa mbaya zaidi namna gani tribulation katika dhiki where the horsemen ambapo wapanda farasi of the apocalypse wa nyakati za kiunabii will be operating at the maximum watakuwa wanajiendeleza katika kasi yao kilele 
That is the message before we begin that is coming straight from the coronavirus prophecy right to your heart. Ambao unajitokeza kutoka katika unabii wa virusi vya corona kuingia katika mambo mayenu. It is a message that is calling on the church. Ni ujumbe ambao unaitia kizazi. And the nations of the earth. Na mataifa ya ulimwengu. That despite the death, 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 death 2000 dead bodies America 2000 dead bodies America every day Ya kwamba kando na ile kifo 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 kila kila wakati kote kote duniani maiti 2000 Marekani kwa siku Every day now for the third day running more than 2000 dead bodies in the USA Kwa siku kwa kila siku sasa kwa siku ya tatu ikiendelea kwa mfululizo zaidi ya maiti 2000 kule Marekani And today they were showing huge freezer trucks that are parked next to the morgue in every hospital Na leo hii walikuwa wanaonyesha malori makubwa makubwa ya mabarafu ambayo imegezwa kando na ile vyumba vya kuweka maiti And he say Na anasema You should raise your head above that. Mwapaswa kuinua vichwa vyenu juu ya hiyo. And realize. Na kugundua. That there is a message. Ya kwamba kunao ujumbe. That all this. Ya kwamba haya yote. Came out of a prophecy. Ili tokana na unabii. That has an instruction. Ambayo ina maagizo. And in that message. Na katika huo ujumbe. The Lord Jehovah said. Bwana Mungu Yehova alisema that when you see this happen. Ya kwamba mkiona hii ikitendeka. Make sure. Hakikisheni. That your name. Ya kwamba jina lako is found written. Linapatikana likiwa limeandikwa. In the book of life. Kwenye kitabu cha uzima. Because time is over. Kwa sababu wakati umekwisha. The Messiah is coming. Masia anakuja. In other words. Kwa maneno mengine That prophecy is warning the current postmodern generation. Inaonya kizazi cha sasa hivi cha usasa. That look. Ya kwamba tazama. In the spirit of self preservation. Katika roho ya kudhihifadhi kwa mtu binafsi. Be careful now. Jichungeni sasa. I heard is bad. Hukumbele ni kubaya. If this can be this bad. Iwapo hii inaweza kuwa mbaya namna hii. Then how worse is Je, in front? Hivyo basi ni mbaya namna gani basi huku mbele? And we saw. Na tuliona that on that July 29th. Ya kwamba tarehe hiyo 29 July. The year 2009. Mwaka 2009. When I was traveling to Venezuela. Nilipokuwa ninasafiri kuelekea Venezuela and I, I was lying on the floor of Johannesburg the airport Oliver Tambo International Na kisha nilikuwa nimelala katika sakafu ya uwanja wa ndege wa Oliver Tambo kule Johannesburg I was so tired so I, I didn't have money to go to the airport hotel with my team but so I just fell asleep on the floor I found out that the floor was for free Nilikuwa nimechoka kabisa kwa hivyo sikuwa na pesa ya kwenda katika hoteli ya uwanja wa ndege pamoja na kiko kosi changu hivyo nikapata ya kwamba sakafu ya uwanja wa ndege ilikuwa bure bila malipo said, hey, this is created by god nikasema eh hey, hii imeumbwa na mungu let me fall asleep here and rest wacha nilale hapa nipumzike at that place mahali pale jehova yahweh jehova yahweh came and spoke with me alikuja akazungumza nami and he lifted me up na akaniinua juu july 29 tarehe 29 july 2009 mwaka 2009 and i found myself inside the throne of god in heaven nami nikajipata ndani mwa enzi ya mungu ndani ya mbingu Now at that place Sasa mahali pale The tremendous glory of Yahweh Utukufu mkuu kabisa wa Yahweh Then I saw the glorious lamb of the Lord Kisha nikamwona mwana kondoo wa utukufu kabisa wa Bwana The glorious lamb of God Mwana kondoo wa utukufu sana wa Bwana At the center of the throne Katikati mwa kiti cha enzi And I saw the living creatures surround him Na nikawaona wale viumbe wenye uhai wakimzunguka And the tremendous glory abound there. Na utukufu mkuu kabisa uko pale. I even still see it as I talk it here. Hata bado ninaiona wakati ninazungumza sasa. And then, na kisha, once I was there. Mara tu nilipokuwa pale. And the lamb was aware that I'm seeing, I'm looking. Na mwana kondoo alijua ya kwamba ninaangalia. I'm paying attention. Nina makinika. Then he broke the fourth seal. Hapo akavunja la kiri ya 4. Remember I have also witnessed the other seals broken. 
Kumbuka pia nimeshuhudia zile la kire zingine zikivunjwa. At the throne of God Almighty. Katika enzi ya Mungu mkuu mwenyezi. But because of the coronavirus. Lakini kwa sababu ya virusi vya corona. I want to focus on this particular one. Ninataka kulenga kwa hii hapa hasa. So that place. Hivyo katika mahali pale. When the lamb broke open. Wakati mwana kondoo alipovunja the fourth seal la kiriane, on the holy scroll of god katika gombo takatifu la mungu inside heaven ndani ya mbingu at the throne of god katika enzi ya mungu then i saw the fourth living creature coming to me hapo nikamuona kiumbe wa nne mwenye uhai akija kwangu and the father made me know that slightly right like this he was right there na baba alijua that's why he seated baba alinisababisha nijue ya kwamba pale tu katika upande wa kulia kidogo alikuwa pale ameketi then he sent because the living creatures came from that side then he sent the fourth living creature kwa sababu yule kiumbe mwenye uhai alitokea upande huo kisha akamtuma yule kiumbe mwenye uhai wanne and after he spoke with me na kisha baada ya kuzungumza pamoja na manabii wote inside the throne of god in heaven ndani ya enzi ya mungu mbinguni the place where everybody wants to go mahali ambapo kila mtu anataka kwenda after he spoke with me he went back in that direction baada ya kuzungumza na manabii wa bwana akaenda tena kwa upande huo then he called the fourth horseman kisha akamuita mpanda farasi wa farasi wanne and he came full charge full fire akaja akiwa ametiwa mori kabisa amewaka moto and i lifted my hand and stopped him like this na kisha manabii wa bwana wakainua mkono wao na kisha kumkomesha namna hiyo the left hand kono wa 10 because i thought he was going to pass kwa sababu nilifikiria kwamba anaenda kufika then he stopped kisha akasimama and then the horse that particular horse normally kneel down so he knelt down he went down like that hivyo basi huyo punda akapiga magoti namna hiyo his color is pale green rangi yake ni ya kijivu jivu if you look at him you would think it's a rotting corpse a rotting dead body ukimwangalia utafikiria kwamba that is becoming greenish already Ukimwangalia utafikiria kwamba ni maiti ambayo inaoza ambaye tayari imeanza kubadilika kuwa kijani kibichi. His rider his name is death. Mpanda farasi wake jina lake ni kifo. And he has a turban he has tied a turban on his head. Na yeye amefunga kilemba katika kichwa chake. At the throne of God. Katika enzi ya Mungu. At that place. Na mahali pale. And then after that the, the horse is there and then after the conversation with them na kisha yule farasi yuko pale na baada ya kufanya mazungumzo na wao then he left hap akaondoka but from heaven lakini kutoka mbinguni before he left kabla kuondoka the lord allowed me to see him running all over the earth bwana aliniruhusu nimuone akikimbia kote kote duniani it was amazing na ilikuwa ya kushangaza i don't know why he first went to it's as though he first went to egypt ni kwa nini sijui kana kwamba mara ya kwanza kabisa alienda Misri sio mara ya kwanza taifa la kwanza tafadhali kwa jina la Yesu ni kana kwamba taifa la kwanza alienda Misri the first when i saw him run it's like he went to egypt first ni kama alienda Misri kwanza and he ran there and then he went he went to a church there also alienda kwa kanisa huko pia because i can see the roof kwa sababu ninaweza kuona pa and the cross na msalaba After that I saw him running I think in Greece also and then all over the world. Na baada ya hapo nikamwona akikimbia kule Ugiriki pia na kote kote duniani. As you know I have cut down a lot of this conversation just for the sake of time. Kama vile mjuavyo nimefupisha sana mazungumzo haya kwa sababu ya wakati. Because there is a time at the throne of God when after talking with him he went around he went, at one point he was coming towards me there, there was a situation there kwa sababu kama vile mjuavyo kwa wakati mmoja wakati nilipokuwa ninazungumza naye akaenda kote kote namna hii kisha kwa, kwa uf... <laughs> at the throne of god at the throne of god katika enzi ya Mungu and so na kwa hivyo i have cut down quite a bit nimefupisha sana but most importantly lakini ya muhimu kabisa i said nilisema that the prophecy of december 1 ya kwamba unabii wa tarehe moja desemba The year 2015. Mwaka wa 2015. The prophecy of the big disease coming to the earth. Unabii wa gonjwa kubwa kabisa ambalo linakuja duniani. Coming from Asia. Likitokea Asia. The prophecy of the coronavirus unabiwa, coming to the earth. Unabii wa virusi vya corona ikija duniani. Coming from Asia. Ikitokea Asia. That prophecy I said. Huo unabii nilisema. Its genesis is from the rider of the pale horse. 
Mwanzo wake unatokana na yule mpana farasi wa farasi wa kijivu jivu. His name is death. Jina lake ni kifo. And hates is following him. Na kuzimu inamfuata nyuma. We have read this. Tumesoma hi. I have taught you this. Nimewafundisha haya. From Revelation chapter 6. Kuanzia ufunuo sura ya 6. But for the sake of the new people who have just joined in today. Lakini kwa sababu ya watu wapi ambao wameungana tu leo hii. I wanted to touch base to bring everybody to the same page. Nilitaka kuwaleta kila mtu katika ukurasa mmoja. And so. Na kwa hivi The prophecy of the coronavirus. Unabiwa virusi vya corona. Is logging. It comes from the fourth horseman. Inatokana na yule mpanda farasi wa farasi wa. His name is death. Jina lake ni kifo. That's why you see death, 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 a lot of death on the earth in Italy, in France, in Britain, America, where everywhere. Ndio sababu mnaona kifo, 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 kifo kila mahali kote kote u Faransa, Italia kote kote. United States. Majimbo ya moja Marekani. Britain, Uingereza, Germany, Ujerumani, Brussels, Brussels, death everywhere. Kifo kila mahali. And a lot of death. Na vifo vingi kabisa. He is the one who is exerting his ministry right now. Yeye ndiye ambaye anatekeleza huduma yake sasa hivi. And then I saw. Kisha nikaona. Recently I came to you and I said I saw a serious global economic crisis. Hivi majuzi nilikuja kwenu nikawaambia ya kwamba niliona utata wa kumaanisha sana wa kiuchumi wa ulimwengu wote mzima. And global famine. Na njaa ya ulimwengu wote mzima. And recently then. Na hivi majuzi pia. The Lord came and wrote for me the word rapture with capital R and the rest are small. Rapture. Bwana alikuja na kuniandikia unyakuzi ikiwa na ile herufi ya R kubwa na kisha yale maandishi mengine madogo. He wrote the word rapture. Aliandika jina unyakuzi. And then after that. Kisha baada ya hapo. I saw a lot of people running. Nikaona watu wengi kabisa wakikimbia. From office buildings. Kutoka kwa majengo ya ofisi. I did not know that part of the rapture. Sikujua sehemu hiyo ya unyakuzi. I know that the Lord has only shown me the church being taken. The church being taken. Ninajua kwamba Bwana amenionyesha tu kanisa likinyakuliwa. But lakini I did not know. Sikujua that the day that is a secret day. Ya kwamba siku ambayo ni siku ya siri. A hidden day. Siku iliyofichwa. That that day. Ya kwamba hiyo siku when it does happen. Itakapotendeka. Everybody on the earth will be aware that the rapture has taken place. Kila mtu duniani atajua ya kwamba unyakuzi umetendeka. People running everywhere the whole earth. Watu wakikimbia kote kote ulimwengu ni kote. Say, hey, Jesus has come. Jesus has come. Wait, wait, wait. Jesus has come. Jesus has come because their colleagues left their clothes and shoes and watches there and disappeared. Wakisema ya kwamba Yesu amekuja. Yesu amekuja. Eh hey, hey, hey. Yesu amekuja. Yesu amekuja kwa sababu wenzao waliwacha mavazi yao na viatu vyao na saa zao pale na walikuwa wamechukuliwa. It is going to be a distressful day. Inaenda kuwa siku ya utata. On the earth here. Katika ulimwengu hapa. While it will be a celebratory day. Wakati ambapo itakuwa siku ya kusherehekea. The eternal celebration. Sherehe ya milele. Of the wedding supper of the lamb. Ya karamu ya harusi ya mwana kondoo. Begins on that day. Inaanza siku hiyo. In the kingdom of God. Katika ufalme wa Mungu. With the rapture church. Na kanisa lililonyakuliwa. Forever. Milele. While here on the earth. Wakati hapa duniani. Anxiety and distress. Fada na shida. Fear and perplexity. Uoga na utata. People running everywhere asking where are their children? Where is the wife? Where is the husband? Watu wakikimbia kimbia kote kote wakiuliza je watoto wao wako wapi? Mke wao wako wapi? Mume wao wako wapi? And that is the day. Na hiyo ndiyo siku. We have been talking about here. Tumekuwa tukizungumzia hapa. How can you take advantage of the prophecy of the coronavirus? Jinsi ambavyo mnaweza kuichukulia na kuitumia vyema unabii wa virusi vya corona. And prepare well. Na kujiandaa vyema. That you may never go to eternal fire. Ili msije kamwe kuingia katika moto wa milele. But enter the eternal celebration in heaven. Bali muingie katika sherehe za milele mbinguni. So we have been on a journey. Hivi tumekuwa katika safari. And that's why today. Ndio sababu leo hii. I want to open it up step by step. Ninataka kuifunua hatua kwa hatua. We have been handling the breaking of the sixth seal. Tumekuwa tukishughulikia kuvunjwa kwa lakiri ya sita. And you saw. Na mliona that when the lamb of God. Ya kwamba wakati mwana kondoo wa Mungu. The Christ 
Jesus of Nazareth. Christo Yesu wa Nazareth. The one that came to the earth. Yeye aliyekuja duniani. And suffered. Na akataseka. And was abused. Na akatukanwa. Blackmail. Akadhihakiwa. And malice. Na kisha akatukanwa. And finally killed. Na hatimaye akauawa. On the cross. Msalabani. That that lamb of God. Ya kwamba huyo mwana kondoo wa Mungu. Who was so meek here. Ambaye alikuwa mnyenyekevu kabisa hapa. Very silent at his massacre, Kat- at his murder when they killed him. Alikuwa amenyamaza kabisa wakati walipomuua. But he saying. Lakini anasema that when that day arrives in heaven. Ya kwamba siku hiyo inapofika mbinguni. For him now. Kwa yeye sasa. To break the sixth seal. Kuvunja lakiri ya sita. Then you see the wrath of God. Hapo sasa unaona ghadhabu ya Mungu. Then you see a Jesus. Hapo basi unamuona Yesu. That is different from what the world had known. Ambaye ni tofauti kabisa kutoka kwa yule ambaye ulimwengu unamjua. Because he executes the judgment of God upon the face of the earth. Kwa sababu anatekeleza hukumu za Mungu juu ya uso wa dunia. Even the judgments that these prophets are bring on the earth. Hata hukumu ambazo hawa manabii wanaleta katika dunia. The earthquakes in Haiti. Matetemeko ya ardhi kule Haiti. Chile earthquake. Tetemeko la Chile. Mexico earthquake. Tetemeko la Mexico. Nepal earthquake. Tetemeko la Nepal. Everywhere Andes everywhere. Kote kote Andes kila mahali. The coronavirus. Virusi vya corona. These are the judgments of the lamb. Hizi ni hukumu za mwana kondoo. That these two prophets have been given mandate to execute. Ambazo hawa manabii wawili wamepewa majukumu ya kutekeleza. That's why they are there at the throne when the lamb is breaking the seal. Ndio sababu wako pale katika enzi wakati mwana kondoo anapovunja lakiri. That's why. Ndio sababu. It is only until I gave the prophecy December 1 2015 that is when the pale horseman struck with coronavirus. Ni hadi hapo tu nilipopeana unabii tarehe moja Desemba mwaka 2015 hapo ndipo sasa yule panda farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu akagonga ulimwengu na virusi vya corona. But we have been asking. Lakini tumekuwa tukiuliza But when the sixth seal is broken. Ya kwamba wakati lakiria sita inapovunjwa. And there is a major shaking. Na kuna kutingizwa kwa ajabu kabisa. You can read it again if you want. Tunaweza kusoma tena iwapo mnataka. The book of Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 all the way to 17. Kitabu cha Ufunuo sura ya sita kuanzia mstari wa 12 hadi 17. You see a tremendous shaking of the heavenly bodies. Unaona kutingizwa kwa ajabu kabisa kwa vitu vya mbinguni. And that tells you. Na hiyo inakuambia. Of the recent time kusiana na wakati wa sasa wa hivi majuzi when the lord has taken me up there wakati bwana aliponipeleka huko juu beyond where mortal man can reach kupita mahali ambapo wanadamu wakufa wanaweza kupifikia and i collided the neutron stars na kisha nikagonganisha nyota za neutroni and i came back na nikarudi and began to give the prophecy for 13 years na nikaanza kupeana unabii huo kwa miaka 13 ni nyahururu nyahururu naivasha naivasha 2000 2005 mwaka 2015 then in mumbai india na pia mumbai india 2008 in front of in the biggest hall in in india in asia mwaka 2008 katika ukumbi mkubwa sana kule asia full of all pastors of india ulikuwa umejaa wachungaji wote wa india and i gave the prophecy there na nikapeana huo unabii pale there is a collision coming up here niliendelea kusema kwamba kuna kugongana ambako kuna kuja hukuju and they are going to collide and it's going to be the biggest shaking in the history of creation na inaenda kugongana na inaenda kuwa kutikisika kwa ajabu kabisa katika historia ya uumbaji finally took place 2000 17. Hatimaye katendeka mwaka 2017 and shook the entire universe. Na ikatingiza ulimwengu wote mzima. The different galaxies trillions of them. Mature ya tofauti tofauti ya nyota katika matrilioni yake. Including our own Milky Way galaxy here. Kuhusisha ture yetu ya nyota hapa Milky Way. Shook every single planet up here ikatingiza kila sayare huko juu and shook the earth in india you see me doing this in india you see me demonstrating to them that it will shake like this it will shake like this it was amazing that when it happened the earth shook like this the earth shook like this they are shook 
Nine years ago. Kule India unawaona manabii wa Bwana wakionyesha ya kwamba wakati itatikisa itatikisa namna hiyo namna hiyo ilishangaza sana kuona ya kwamba wakati ulimwengu ulipotikiswa ilikuwa namna hiyo miaka 13 baadaye. When you see the manifestation. Unapoona udhihirisho wake. Then you can tell. Hapo basi unaweza kutambua. How close is walking with God the Father? Jinsi ambavyo anatembea na Mungu Baba kwa karibu sana. This is just the reality has now do- that has now dawned upon the face of the earth. Huu sasa ni uhalisia na ukweli ambao ume umeweka katika ulimwengu sasa hivi. And so. Na kwa hivyo When the sixth seal is broken. Wakati la kiria sita inapovunjwa. You see the unbelievable shaking of the heavenly bodies. Unaona kule kutingizwa kwa ajabu kabisa kwa vitu vya mbinguni. Plus the unbelievable global earthquake. Pamoja na kule kutikiswa kwa ajabu kabisa tetemeko kubwa la ulimwengu wote mzima. The earthquake that has never been seen since creation. Tetemeko la ardhi ambalo halijawahi tendeka tangia uumbaji. And you see everybody the kings, the princesses. Na unaona watu wote, wafalme pamoja na wakuu wote. The generals. Majemedari. The mighty men. Watu wa nguvu. The rich. Matajiri. The poor. Maskini. The everybody. Kila mmoja. The slave. Watumwa. The free. Watu huru. They all run to hide. Wote wanakimbia kujificha. They all run to hide. Wote wanakimbia kujificha. That is what we are looking at. Hicho ndicho tulikuwa tunaangazia. But I asked. Lakini nikauliza. Why does the Lord judge? Ni kwa nini Bwana anahukumu? With such maximum fire and power. Na moto wa ajabu namna hiyo na nguvu. Let us look at another reason why he judges. Wacha tuangazie sababu nyingine kwa nini anahukumu. For tonight's service. Kwa ajili ya ibada ya usiku wa leo. Turn with me blessed people. Geuka pamoja nami watu wabarikiwa. To this beautiful scripture. Katika andiko hili la kupendeza. Let us read the book of Daniel chapter 8 verses 23-26. Tusome kitabu cha Danieli sura ya 8 mstari wa 23 hadi 26. Another reason the Lord has to judge very severely. Sababu nyingine ambayo Bwana ni lazima ahukumu kwa njia kali kabisa. Daniel chapter 8. Danieli sura ya 8 verses 23-26. Mstari wa 23 hadi 26. And it's so beautiful for me to come into your homes. Na niyakupendeza sana kwangu mimi kuja katika maboma yenu. At a time when everyone is quarantined. Kwa wakati ambapo kila mtu amefungiwa. I have received a lot of texts and messages from you that are out there we are reaching in your living rooms globally. Nimepokea jumbe nyingi kabisa na barua pepe kutoka kwenu ninyi ambao mko kule nje ambao tunawafikia katika masebule yenu. Right now we are reaching billions, literally billions. Sasa hivi tunawafikia mabilioni. Globally. Kote kote duniani. I have received your text from Santa Fe in uh, Argentina. Nimepokea ujumbe wako kutoka kwa Santa Fe Argentina. You just discovered this channel you are asking which country does do these prophets come from? Uligundua tu huu upeperusho na ulikuwa unauliza je hawa manabii wanatoka katika taifa lipi I've received your messages from Indonesia Nimepokea jumbe zenu kutoka Indonesia from Panama Panama kutoka Panama I even replied some hata Panama ni, hata nikajibu zingine Panama and many other nations na mataifa mengi mengine hiyo So what a wonderful time Hivi ni wakati wa kupendeza namna gani When gani. finally the Lord has brought everything to a stop Wakati ambapo hatimaye Bwana amekomesha kila kitu The things that tend to distract mankind Ya kwamba vitu ambavyo vilikuwa vinamzuilia mwanadamu The things that get you very busy God cannot talk to you vitu ambavyo viliwafanya muwe na shughuli nyingi sana ambavyo Mungu hawezi kuzungumza nanyi. The aeroplanes have been parked. Ndege sasa zimeegeshwa. The offices closed. Sasa maofisi zimefungwa. People at home. Watu wako nyumbani. And told don't come out. Na wameambiwa msitoke nje. This is the most beautiful way. Hui hii ndio njia ya kupendeza kabisa. Most beautiful moment. Wakati wa kupendeza kabisa. For me now to come to you in your living room. Kwangu mimi sasa kuja kwenu katika masebuleni mwenu. Most of you are writing look we are quarantined but we have received you now in our living room we are quarantined I have received your messages globally Wengine wenu mnaandika ya kwamba tazama tumefungiwa lakini Wengi wenu Wengi wenu mnaandika na kusema ya kwamba tazama tumefungiwa lakini sasa tunakusikiliza kutoka kwa masebule yetu We are we are watching you Tunakutazama in our living rooms Masebuleni mwetu Daniel chapter 8 
Daniel 23 to 26. He says, in the latter part of their reign, when the rebels have become completely wicked, in other words, when the wickedness has struck its maximum, he says, a fierce looking king, a master of intrigue, Study wahila. will arise. A fierce looking king, a master of trickery, a master of intrigue, Na study wahila. will arise. Ata inuka. And he says, Na anasema. he will become very strong. Na nguvu nyingi kabisa. But not by his own power. Lakini si kwa uwezo wake he will cause astounding devastation. Ata wa kutisha. And will succeed in whatever he does. Na ata kwa chochote anachofanya. He will destroy those who are mighty. Ata wangamiza watu, watu marufu. The holy people. Watu watakatifu. He will cause deceit to prosper. And he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince or princesses. That is the prince of peace. And yet, he will be destroyed but not by human hand. Aye. Aye. That is where I want us to begin from. And I remember let me again bring you before the throne of God. Look at this now. The Lord bring me at the throne position. The, can I share with you some secrets today? There is a golden walkway inside the throne of God. And that golden walkway Way, is made of a very rich yellowish gold. Let me give some more detail now. That yellowish gold that has that is on, on the golden walkway. There are certain types of tiles, tiles. Tiles used for construction. Tiles. There are certain type of tiles that when you look at them, you might think they are cracked because you see some, some lines, design lines, the way they have been cut or something, I don't know. But you see as if it's as you th you'd think it's a crack, but that's a design. So the yellowish gold is exactly like that. And that walkway goes straight to the throne position where the ark of the covenant of the Lord is seated. However, Hata hivyo, on both sides of that rich yellowish gold, kila upande ya hiyo ya kimanjano ya utajiri, there is the richer reddish brown gold that makes two strips, two strips escorting it. Kuna manjano nyingine ambayo ni ya Sio manjano. Kuna dhahabu nyingine ambayo ni ya bei gali sana kabisa ya utajiri kabisa ambayo ni ya hudurungi hivi wekundu. Reddish brown, reddish brown. Ambayo ni ya hudurungi hivi wekundu. So there are two strips on both sides there's a strip of richer reddish brown gold but there is this very expensive and beautiful yellowish gold that's at the center. Hivyo basi katika kila upande wa hiyo barabara kuna hii dhahabu ambayo ni ya wekundu hudurungi ni ya utajiri sana na kisha katikati kuna hii dhahabu ambayo ni ya kimanjano. And this goes to the throne position. Na hii inaelekea hadi katika mahali pa enzi. And then at the throne 
okay for me let me share with you then then he that was speaking with me asked me to kneel down and pray na kisha yeye ambaye alikuwa anazungumza pamoja nami akaniuliza nipige magoti na kuomba and then kisha after that baada ya hiyo I saw the two cherubi of glory carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Nikawaona makerubi wawili wa utukufu wakibeba sanduku la agano la Mungu. They came and passed right near me like this on the golden walkway. Walikuja wakapita karibu nami namna hii katika hiyo njia ya dhahabu. They were holding the ark of the covenant of the Lord using the staves. Walikuwa wameshika sanduku la agano la Mungu wakitumia zile fito. And they were walking sideways with their heads bowed down. Na walikuwa wanatembea pande upande upande wakiwa na vichwa vyao vimeinamishwa. Like that. Namna hiyo. And so they went and placed the ark of the covenant of the Lord at the throne position. Kwa hivyo wakaenda na kuweka hiyo sanduku ya agano la Mungu katika mahali pa enzi. But when they put the ark of the covenant there lakini walipoweka hilo sanduku la agano pale the two kerubi wale makerubi wawili they look the same but they have two the kerubi of glory they have two different functions wanaonekana sawia wanafanana kabisa lakini wana matumizi tofauti tofauti the one on this side of the ark of the covenant yule ambaye yuko upande huu katika sanduku la agano he comes to the front anakuja mbele and he does something and he peels the chest like this na kisha anafanya kitu na kisha kuondoa hicho kifua namna hii and then after that baada ya hapo back there but the other one remains there anarudi pale lakini yule mwingine anabaki tu pale pale so behind that throne hivyo nyuma ya hiyo enzi is tremendous. Ni ajabu kabisa. There is the river of life. Kuna mto wa uzima. And the tree of life. Na mti wa uzima. Behind there. Kule nyuma. And so blessed people. Na kwa hivyo watu wabarikiwa. Then after that. Baada ya hapo. At that place. Mahali pale. When I was kneeling down and praying. Nilipokuwa nimepiga magoti nikiomba. When I just said. Niliposema tu. Mighty Father, you know those prayers are put in me. They are, they are put in you they are put in me at that place Uwajua maombi hayo yanawekwa ndani mwangu mahali pale Mighty Father Baba mkuu Today I come to you Leo hii naja kwako With a lot of praise and thanksgiving Na sifa nyingi kabisa na shukrani In the mighty name of Jesus Katika jina kuu la Yesu Then immediately Kisha ghafla The cloud you saw in Kisumu visit here Wingu ambalo mliona Kisumu likitembelea hapa He came like a funnel in the same way alikuja kama vile faneli kwa njia hiyo hiyo He passed the golden walk then he sat sat on the mercy seat and he, he goes up very fast very fast and then beyond that we cannot describe Kisha akapita katika hiyo barabara ya dhahabu na kisha akaenda juu namna hiyo na kisha kaketi katika kiti chake cha utukufu And then Kisha conversation takes place by voice Mazungumzo yakafanyika yanafanyika kwa sauti I want to share more Sitashiriki mengi But what happened Lakini kilichotendeka is that uh, the two were on both sides of the, uh, the two were on one side of the ark of the covenant Ni kwamba wao wawili walikuwa upande mmoja wa sanduku la agano and one was on the other side Na mmoja alikuwa upande huo mwingine Then he said Kisha akasema Now I have my fourth prophet here. Sasa ninaye nabii wangu wanne hapa. And so Kwa hivyo Because Daniel was alone on this side. Kwa sababu Danieli alikuwa peke yake upande huu. Of the mercy seat. Upande huo wa kiti cha rehema. Then he has shown me almost all the visions of Daniel until now. Kisha amenionyesha maono yote ya Danieli kufikia sasa. The book of Daniel chapter 2. Kitabu cha Danieli sura ya pili. 34 35 34:35 and 44:45 Na 44:45 Is what he says here. Daniel chapter 2 turn with me there I invite you to join me at Daniel chapter 2 verses 34:35 Daniel sura ya pili geuka pamoja nami hapo ninakualika ili kwamba ukaweze kugeuka pamoja nami kwenye kitabu cha Daniel sura ya pili mstari wa 34:35 34:35 While you were watching Ulipokuwa unaangalia a rock was cut out Jiwe lilikatwa but not by human hands Lakini si kwa mikono ya mwanadamu It struck 
the statue on his feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron and the clay and the bronze and the silver and the gold were broken to pieces and they became like chaff, like dust on a threshing floor. In the summer the wind swept them away without leaving any trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the entire earth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! After reading Daniel chapter 8, 2326. And I bring you to this vision the Lord showed me, this vision of Daniel. That rock comes from this direction here. And he comes at this angle. And that rock is not straight. That rock is actually swollen but sharp at the edges. It's swollen but sharp, sharp, sharp at the edges. Na hilo jiwe sio sambamba hivi bali limefura hapa katikati na kisha lina makali upande zake. Limenona kidogo, no, nona kidogo. So it is it's a bit swollen but it's sharp at the edges. Limenona kidogo lakini lina makali katika upande wake. And the statue that had appeared that I saw in front of me huge. Na huge il, huge statue. Na ile sanamu ambayo niliona mbele yangu kubwa kubwa kabisa. And the feet I don't know begin up somewhere there. Vidole vya migu zake. Na vidole vya migu zake. Zinaanzia mahali pali. Ni kubwa kabisa. And then I saw that rock come. Na kisha nikaona hilo jiwe likija. From the sky. Kutoka kwa anga. In that direction. Kwa namna hiyo. Then without notice. Bila kujua. Suddenly. Gafla. The rock smashed it. Smashed it. Lile jiwe likaipi. And what the Lord wanted me to see, to, Na, to know, kila alitaka, nijue, everything was disintegrated so it became dust, dusty. Kila kitu kabisa, hivyo vumbi. And the Lord made the dust to sweep me like this over me. Na buwana, vumbi namna hiyo. The next thing I realized, my feet could not fit. Jambo jingine ambalo niligundua ni ya kwamba migu yangu haingeweza kukapo. So this which I thought was an ocean which I thought I was going to fall. Hivyo basi hii ambayo nilifikiria ya kwamba ni bahari ambayo nilifikiria ya kwamba ninaenda kuanguka. Is the rest of the universe. Ni ulimwengu mwingine. That rock became a huge mountain filled the entire earth. Hilo jiwe likafanyika mlima. Entire. Entire earth. Hilo jiwe likafanyika mlima mkubwa kabisa kabisa likaujaza ulimwengu wote. So you understand. Hivyo unaelewa. What the Lord is saying. Kile ambacho Bwana anasema. That the reason the lamb. Ya kwamba sababu mwana kondo. Has to break the sixth seal. Lazima avunje la kiri ya sita. And shake the entire heavenly bodies. Na kutingiza nguvu zote za kimbinguni. According to Revelation chapter 6. Kulingana na kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya sita. For those who have just joined us today. Kwa wale ambao meungana tu nasi leo hii. Revelation chapter 6 our lead scripture. Ufunuo sura ya sita andiko letu la muongozo. We've been at this for more than two months now. Tumekua hapa sasa kwa zaidi ya miezi miwili. He says from verse 12. Anasema kwanzi ya mstari wa kumina mbili. I watched as the lamb opened the sixth seal. Nika angalia mwana kondo alipokuwa kivunja ile lakiri ya sita. There was a great earthquake. This is a global earthquake. Unbelievable earthquake this one. Paka toke tetemeko kuu kabisa la nchi. Hili lilikuwa tetemeko la ulimwengu mzima kabisa. This is a global earthquake. Hili ni tetemeko la ulimwengu wote mzima. The sun turned black like sackcloth. Jua likawa jeusi kama nguwe za gunia. Made of goat hair. Ili otengenezo kwa singa zambuzi. The whole moon turned blood red. Mwezi wote ukawa mwekundu kama damo. And the stars in the sky fell fell to the earth as figs and ripe figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind 
kama vile matunda ya mtini yasiyokoma yaangukavyo wakati mti wake unapotikiswa na upepo mkali verse 14 wa the heavens receded like a scroll like a sandwich anga ikatoweka kama gombo isokotoavyo being rolled up isokotoavyo and every mountain na kila mlima and island na kila kisiwa was moved from his place kikaondolewa mahali pake then the kings of the earth ndipo wafalme wa dunia the princesses waku wote the generals majemedari the rich matajiri the mighty wenye nguvu and the everyone else na kila mtu both slave and free mtumwa na mtu huru they ran and hid in the caves wale kimbia na kujificha katika mapango among the rocks of the mountains kwenye miamba ya milima they called on to the mountains wakaita milima and the rocks na miamba fall on us tuangukieni and hide us mkatufiche from the face of him that sits on the throne na uso wake yeye aketie kwenye kiti cha enzi and from the wrath of the lamb na ghadhabu ya mwana kondoo for the great day of their wrath has come kwa maana siku ile kuu ya ghadhabu yao imewadia and who can stand it je ni nani awezaye kustahimili who can withstand it nani awezaye kusimama who can survive it nani awezaye kunusirika who can face it nani awezaye kukumbana naye Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why does the lamb break the seal? Ni kwa nini mwana kondoo anaivunja lakini? At this time. Kwa wakati huu. The sixth seal. Lakini ya sita. You see right away. Mwana moja kwa moja. He saying. Anasema that part of the the main re- central reason. Ya kwamba sa- sababu ku sababu nyeti. The lamb breaks that sixth seal. Mwana kondoo anaivunja hiyo lakiri ya sita and shake the entire creation unbelievably. Na kutingiza ulimwengu wote na uumbaji wote mzima. Yes because ni kwa sababu of what we read in Daniel chapter 8. Ya kile ambacho tulisoma kwenye Daniel sura ya 8. 23 to 26. Hadi 26. A ruler appears on the earth. Mtawala anainuka duniani and when you saw what we saw on the fifth seal na ukiona kile ambacho tuliona kwenye lakiri ya tano anybody that try to worship jesus yeyote ambaye anajaribu kumwabudu yesu he slaughtered them all anawachinja wote and their souls na nafsi zao are now under the altar of the temple in heaven sasa ziko chini ya madhabahu ya hekalu mbinguni and they are crying out to the lord na wanamlilia bwana for vindication kwa ajili ya kulipiza kisasi they are crying out to the, to the lord wanamlilia bwana for retribution ili kwamba kulipiza kwa uhaki. They are crying out to the Lord. Wanamlilia Bwana. That he may purge the earth. Ili kwamba asafishe dunia. And establish the kingdom of glory on the earth. Na kuimarisha ufalme wa utukufu katika dunia. And vanquish this character here. Na kisha kumfutilia mbali kumuonda huyu mtu hapa. So do you understand? Hivyo basi je mnaelewa? The center reason. Sababu kuu Why the wrath of God of this magnitude? Ni kwa nini ghadhabu ya Mungu ya kiwango hiki? Is poured out on the earth ina miminwa katika dunia is because ni kwa sababu somebody has appeared mtu ameinuka and he has killed the holy ones of god na amewaua watakatifu wa mungu and he has succeeded na amefaulu in creating the abomination katika kuumba na kufanya machukizo of desolation ya ukiwa he has removed worship ameondoa ibada from the temple kutoka kwa hekalu ai ai That's why the Lord. Dio sababu Bwana. He now comes to to support these prophets. Sasa anakuja ili kuwasaidia hawa manabii. To fight this character. Kupigana vita na hawa watu. Many times I've told you. Mara nyingi nimewaambia that I have already seen that dispensation. Ya kwamba tayari nimeona hayo majira. What we have read today in Revelation chapter 6. Kile ambacho tumesoma leo kwenye ufunuo sura ya 6. Verses 12 to 17. Stari wa 12 hadi 17. I have already seen in it, seen it and lived it. Tayari nimeiona na kuishi. And I even gave the prophecy of the heavenly bodies getting cut and falling off. I have gave, given that prophecy I think two years ago I gave it. Na tayari nimeopeana ule unabii wa vile vitu vya mbinguni vikianguka na kupasuka. Nimepeana unabii huo. Those uh, planets. Hizo ni sayari. I'm talking to you because you're saying vitu vya mbinguni. So those are planets. 
hizo sayari za mbinguni zikianguka na zingine yazo zinaanguka katika dunia and so na kwa hivyo that is such a t- terrible time huo ni wakati wa kutisha kabisa but that is because lakini hiyo ni sababu in that dispensation katika hayo majira they have totally violated the lord wamemsumbua sana na kumwaribia bwana There is the worship of Satan in that time. Kuna ibada ya shetani katika mahali pale. They have thrown out the daily sacrifice at the Lord's temple. Wametupa nje ile dhabihu ya kila siku katika madhabahu ya Bwana. And that's why the wrath of God works as hot Dios, on the earth. Works as hot. Ndio sababu ghadhabu ya Mungu inawaka moto katika ulimwengu. And when he comes. Na anapokuja. The reason that the Lord his his fire his anger works as hot sababu ambayo bwana anakuja na amewaka moto is because of revelation chapter 13 verse 2 ni kwa sababu ya kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya 13 mstari wa 2 the antichrist mpinga kristo when he appears into the scene and is doing these things at that time A- the lord has to answer wakati anapokuja na anafanya mambo haya kwa wakati huo lazima bwana ajibu let me describe to you that vision wacha niwaeleze hayo maono the lord brought me to the seashore bwana alinileta katika ufuo wa bahari when i stood there na niliposimama hapo then a beast came from the sea kisha mnyama akatokea katika bahari all the way kote kote and he passed near me like this na akapita karibu yangu namna hii And then he went there are three there are three levels of the 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 altar the place rather the place where he was raised. Na kisha kuna viwango vitatu vya madhabahu ambavyo papo aliinuliwa. So he climbed the first one second and he went on top there. Na hivi akaipanda ile ya kwanza ya pili akaenda pale juu. And then after that. Baada ya hapo another beast appeared but from the land. Mnyama mwingine akaonekana lakini kutoka kwa nchi kavu. So these are the principles that are involved in the grand battle at this time. Hawa ndio wale wapiganaji wakuu ambao wanahusika katika vita vikubwa kabisa kwa wakati hapo. They are for Satan. Hao ni kwa ukwaji ya shetani. And that's why the Lord has to fight also. Ndio sababu Bwana lazima pia apigane. To establish his position. Kuimarisha msimamo wake. And his wrath works as hot. Na ghadhabu yake inawaka kabisa. We are looking at the reasons why the anger of God works as fire hot. Tunatafuta sababu kwa nini ghadhabu ya Mungu inawaka kabisa moto. Until he's shaking the planets the stars they are falling on the cities and blasting cities. Hadi anatingiza sayare nyota zinaanguka katika miji na zinaporomosha miji. The sun is blackened. Jua linatiwagiza. And darkened. Na kisha kufanywa giza. Like covered with goat hair. Kama vile iliyofunikwa na singa za mbuzi. The moon. Mwezi is blood red ni mwekundu kama damu it has gone into cold red meaning bloodshed imeingia kwa meaning war there is war bloodshed imekuwa mwekundu kumaanisha kwamba umwagaji wa damu kumaanisha kwamba vita why kwa nini because there is a principle that operates at this time kwa sababu kunayo kanuni na sera inayofanya kazi kwa wakati huu his name is the antichrist kwa jina lake ni mpinga kristo And we see very clearly here. Na tunaona wazi kabisa hapa. That he tortures God's people and he massacres them. Ya kwamba anawatesa watu wa Mungu na anawachinja. And when we saw the fifth seal. Na tulipoangazia lakiri ya tano. They cry out from under the altar. Wanalia kutoka chini ya madhabahu. How long? How long, Lord? Hadi lini? Hadi lini, Bwana? For the rain, Lord. E Bwana mwenyezi. Mighty and holy. Powerful and true. How long until you avenge our blood? Che hadi lini hadi utakapolipiza kisasi kwa ajili ya damu yetu? Then you see what happens in the sixth scene. Sasa unaona kile kinachotendeka katika lakiri ya sita. As though he's answering them. Kana kwamba anawajibu. Everything breaks fire. Kila kitu kinalipuka moto. Red hot anger of God. Kadhabu moto kali kabisa ya Mungu. It works as hot. Inalipuka kabisa na kuwa moto. Revelation 13 he says verse 2. I'm reading from 1. Ufunuo 13 anasema kuanzia mstari wa kwanza. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea. Yule joka akajikita katika mchanga ulioko ufuoni mwa bahari. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. Nami nikamuona mnyama akitoka ndani ya bahari. It 
ten horns and seven heads with ten crowns on his horns. And each head had a blasphemous name. The reason the Lord has to strike the earth with maximum fire na, maximum anger na moto mkali kabisa, gadabu, kali the fire of his anger moto wa hasira yake. is because Ni kwa there is blasphemy going on against Jehovah of the earth Kuna makufuru dhidi ya Jehovah katika dunia. so he has to respond Hivyo ni lazima ajibu. he has to answer them Ni lazima ajibu the ruler of that time mtawala wa wakati huo on each of the heads and the horns katika kila the pembele crowns, taji is carrying blasphemy anabeba ukufuru openly wazi kabisa so god hivyo mungu cannot stand it hawezi kuistahimili the lamb mwana kondoo has to break the sixth seal ni lazima avunje la kiria sita and teach him na kumfundisha who really created the earth kwa hakika ni nani aliyeumba dunia and who is more powerful na ni nani aliye na nguvu zaidi it is a war ni vita god is coming out bwana anajitokeza the heavens like curtains he removes the curtains he re- rolls the heavens Bingu kama pazia anaondoa hiyo pazia anapasua mbingu. Push the sun away, push the stars and the moon say, can I see who is talking here? Anasongesha yeah. jua, anasongesha mwezi na nyota anasema ya kwamba je, ninaweza kumuona nani anazungumza hapa? And then pa 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 with neutron stars. Kisha pa 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 na nyota za neutroni. Can I see who is talking here? Naweza kumuona nani anazungumza hapa? Blaspheming me. Akini kufuru. Hai. Ai. Can we see who is more powerful now? Tunaweza kuona ni nani mwenye nguvu zaidi sasa? He says. Anasema, the beast I saw. Mnyama yule niliyemuona. Resembled a leopard. Alikuwa kama chui. But had feet like those of a bear. Miguu yake ilikuwa kama ya dubu. And a mouth like that of a lion. Na kinywa chake kama cha simba. Look at that now. Tazama hiyo sasa. He say. Anasema, the one that has abused God's people. Yule ambaye amewatukana watu wa Mungu. That has abused the children of Yahweh who are worshiping Jesus. Ye ambaye amewatukana watoto wa Yahweh ambao wanamwabudu Yesu. Those that have stood for the word of God. Wao ambao wamesimama kwa ajili ya neno la Mungu. Those that have maintained the testimony of the salvation of Jesus. Wao ambao wamedumisha ushuhuda wa wokovu wa Yesu. The reason they were slaughtered Sababu walichinjwa is because the one that comes to slaughter them Ni kwa sababu ye ambaye anakuja kuwachinja Ai Look at the ferocity Angalia, ferocious Angalia huo ukali He is a leopard Yeye ni chui I have seen him he is a huge leopard though Nimemuona yeye ni chui mkubwa He is a leopard Yeye ni chui And then Alafu He has the head of a lion and other heads. Ana kichwa kama cha simba na vichwa vingine. And I don't know whether there were four heads when the Lord presented him to me. Na sijui iwapo. It looks like there there are four he has four leopard heads. Yaonekana ya kwamba ana vichwa vinne vya chui. And the big lion head. Na kichwa kikubwa cha simba. And other heads. Na vichwa vingine. And so Halafu you can imagine when the Lord presented him in the dream. Unaweza kuanzia wakati Bwana alipomleta katika ndoto. Look at this now. Angalia hii sasa. The different heads are moving differently. Vile vichwa tofauti tofauti vinasonga kwa njia tofauti tofauti. It is unbelievable. Ni ya kutisha kabisa. So you can imagine the fight that's ahead here. Hivyo unaweza kuanzia vita ambavyo viko hapa mbele. So you can imagine what the coronavirus is warning this generation about. Unaweza kuanzia kile ambacho virusi vya corona vinaona ya kizazi hiki kuhusiana nayo. Saying, Please don't. Wanasema tafadhali msifanye. Please don't cross here. Tafadhali msivuke hapa. The other side is bad. Ule upande mwingine ni mbaya. Because if the Lord intended Kwa sababu iwapo Bwana alikusudia to warn you that you may enter the rapture. Kuwaonya ili kwamba mpate kuingia katika unyakuzi. Corona virus. Kupitia kwa virusi vya corona. And the prophecy of the corona virus. Na unabii wa virusi vya corona. Then the Lord really succeeded. Hapo basi kwa hakika Bwana alifaulu. Because in other words he said. Kwa sababu kwa maneno mengine anasema the one that is coming. Yeye ajaye. 
the one that will reign at that time yeah, is absolutely unbearable. Yeah, because if the Lord intended to paint the picture for this generation, you are the generation being talked to. And you are the generation being spoken to. Because he's saying, he's a leopard. And we all know how vicious a leopard is. A leopard is bad. How vicious a leopard is. We all know. Terrible. The leopard has no rules. It's wild. The leopard is totally bloody. Very vicious. And murderous. And the rage of the leopard is uncontrollable. And when he jumps, he has he he, he Attacks any part of the body. He attacks anyhow. Normally if you find in the grass. In the wilderness. A place where a leopard has murdered an animal and ate it. Because the animal It is normally very disturbed grass. Very disturbed. With a lot of blood. You see one hand there. The tongue this way. The, in, a little piece of interest in here. It's a terrible place. To kawaida, see. Nyasi Kote kote, upande una una ulimi, upande una una the kipana, blood is all over the all over the grass. Damu iko mahali kote kote katika nyasi. Sometimes if there is a tree, you see the blood on the trunk of the tree, meaning in the process struggle, you also beat it on the tree as he was eating. Wakati mwingine iwapo kuna mti pale, unona ya kwamba katika lile shina la mti, unona ya kwamba kuna damu pale, katika hatua hiyo, aligonga mti wakati alipokuwa na kula. Ali gonga kwa he hit it on the tree. Ali gonga kwa mti. As he was eating. Wewe kati alipokuwa nakula. The leopard. Chui. The Lord paints the picture. Bwana anaichora hiyo taswira. Of that blasphemer. Ya huyo mkufuru. That will be reigning at that time. Ambaye atakuwa anatawala kwa wakati huo. The reason the sixth seal has to be broken. Sababu ambayo lazima la kiria sita lazivunjwe. And he says Na anasema, that he is also like a lion. Ya kwamba yeye pia ni kama simba. And we know the lion is the king of the wild. Na tunajua ya kwamba simba ndiye mfalme wa hayawani. If a leopard is not sitting carefully. Iwapo chui hajamakinika vizuri. If he's not he doesn't sit well or carefully steady. Iwapo uh, hajakaa kwa njia inayofaa hajamakinika. A lion can eat him for lunch. Simba anaweza mkula kwa ajili ya chakula cha mchana. That's how terrible the lion is. Hivyo ndivyo simba ni wakutisha. And when a lion roars. Na wakati simba anguruma hapo. Normal all the other beasts in the wilderness. Kwa kawaida hao wanyama wengine wa hayawani. They are astonished. Wanashtuka. They are shocked. Wanashangaa. They like what manner of roar is this? Wanashangaa aina gani ya ngurumo hii? They, they, they are tremble this one will eat us. Wanatetemeka huyu atatukula. The lion. Simba. And the bear. Nadubu. So the Lord puts the worst three together. Kwa hivyo Bwana anawaweka wale wabaya sana zaidi pamoja. To warn a people. Kuwaonya watu. Which people? Watu wapi? This generation. Hiki kizazi. Before the rapture has happened. Kabla unyakuzi utendeke. To tell you. Kuambia. Get out of here. Ya kwamba undokeni hapa. You receive Jesus. Ninyi pokeni yesu. And be born again. Na muokoke. Because the time is coming. Kwa sababu wakati unakuja. When there will be tribulation. When you cannot worship Jesus. And that time is near. Because the coronavirus. That I prophesy. Is warning you. Be careful now. Be careful now. Be careful now. We are, we are about to enter the danger zone. Receive the gospel. 
Pokeni injili. Be born again. Muokoke. And go to heaven. Na muende mbinguni. So do you understand why the wrath of God is poured on the earth? Hivyo je, mnaelewa kwa nini ghadhabu ya Mungu inamwagika katika dunia? At the breaking of the sixth seal. Katika kuvunjwa kwa lakiri ya sita. Because kwa sababu such a vicious creature Kiumbe cha ukali namna hii has devoured God's people in the most terrible manner in the most bloody way ever. Amewararua watu wa Mungu katika njia ya kutisha kabisa katika njia ya mwagaji damu kabisa. And he says. Na anasema He says on verse 3. Anasema mstari wa 3. One of the heads of the beast kila moja wapo ya vicho vya huyo mnyama. Sim, we are reading Revelation 13 blessed people you are with us. Again say one of the heads of the beast. Anasema kila moja wapo ya vicho vya huyo mnyama. Sim to have had a fatal wound. Kilikuwa kama kilichokwisha kupata jeraha la mauti. But the fatal wound. Lakini jeraha hilo la mauti had been healed. Likapona. And the whole world. Ulimwengu wote was filled with wonder. Ukashangaa. And they wandered. Na wakashanga. And they followed the beast. Na wakamfuata huyo mnyama. And nyama. people worshiped the dragon. Na watu wakaliabudu lile joka. Because he had given authority. Kwa sababu lilikuwa limempa mamlaka. To the beast. Huyo mnyama. And they also worshiped the beast. Pia walikuwa kamwabudu huyo mnyama. And they asked. Na kuuliza. Who is like the beast? Ni nani aliye kama huyo mnyama? Who can wage war against him? Ni nani awezaye kupigana vita naye? Do you understand? Je, muelewa? Why the anger of God? Ni kwa nini hasira ya Mungu? Must work hard. Ni lazima iwake vikali. Why the lamb? Ni kwa nini mwana kondoo? Must rush and break the sixth seal. Ni lazima akimbie na kuvunja la kiriasi. That the Lord may strike the earth. Ili Bwana apige dunia. Because kwa sababu when his one and only begotten son. Wakati mwanawe mmoja na wapekee that he gave to redeem man came and died for the sin of man and he went under and remember for me I have greater detail on how under he died for you he died for man and went under he was wounded on your behalf and went under and resurrected but when he resurrected the whole world rejected him until today the whole world rejected Jesus until today they don't like him Otherwise there would be a great revival. Otherwise they would have come to these two prophets. And he says. Na anasema, However, hata hivyo, Now when the beast comes. Sasa wakati huyo mnyama anapokuja. The antichrist. Pinga Kristo. He had a fatal wound. Alikuwa na jeraha la kufisha. That healed. Ambalo lilipona. In other words he's saying he resurrected. Kwa maneno mengine anasema kwamba alifufuka. The Lord watched. Bwana alitazama. When the whole world. Wakati ulimwangu wote mzima. They were awed. Wote walishtuka. And they worship the beast. Na wakamwabudu mnyama. When Jesus resurrected. Wakati Yesu alipofufuka. People rejected him. Watu walimkataa. When the beast resurrected. Wakati mnyama The whole world worship. And they celebrate him. They ask. Who is like the beast? Who can do war against him? And when God hears this. He has to break the six seal. And answer them. And let them know. That there is one. Who is higher than the beast. Hallelujah. He strike the heart. Na kisha kagonga ulimwengu. Higher than the beast. Aliyemkuu kuliko mnyama. They provoke the Lord. Wanamchochea Bwana na kumkasirisha. Did you understand? Je, mlielewa? Why he has to strike the earth? Ni kwa nini lazima agonge dunia? With the sixth seal. Na lakiri ya sita. 
because some blasphemy is happening against my God Jehovah. And he says verse 5. Verse the beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise authority for 42 months. It was given power Again, verse 6 he says it opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling. Do you understand now why the anger of God has to wax hot? Why the lamb has to break the sixth seal? And the wrath of God be poured on the earth. Because he opens his mouth to blaspheme Jehovah Yahweh, the mighty, most terrible God of Israel, the holy God of Elijah, the tremendous, fierce God of Moses, the powerful God of Daniel, the mighty God of John the Baptist. He opens his mouth and he blasphemes him and he slanders him. So when you see slander happening on the earth now against the people of God against the servants of God just be aware that these people will be part of the grand slander slandering God do you understand why the Lord has to answer verse 6 is unbelievable it all opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place. You know the Lord and his name. He is known for his name. His honor is on his name. You cannot touch his name. You cannot. That's why you see the earth is in trouble right now. Because you said be careful. The one I'm sending to you. He bears my name. So be careful now. Don't bring your blasphemy and blackmail to him. I know him very well. He will not forgive you. Look at the earth now. His name. Jina lake. He slandered his name. Alitukana jina lake. And his dwelling place. Na mahali pake alipoishi. And those who live in heaven. Na wale wakao mbinguni. He provoked heaven. Pi ali alikasirisha mbingu. He provoked the Lord in heaven. Ali mkasirisha na kumchochea buwana mbinguni. It made the Lord open, roll out the heaven and say, open up here now. Move the sun, move the stars out of my way. Who is this talking here? Can you now say what you've been saying? Then, pa, pa. 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 Neutron stars. Blasting cities. Akiporomosha miji. Akipasuwa miji. Verse 7 he says. Chitari wa saba anasema. It was given power to wage war. Pia akarusiwa kufanya vita. Against God's holy people. Na watakatifu wa mungu. And to conquer them. Na kuwa shinda. Do you understand why God fights back? Je, munaelewa kwa nini buwana anapiga na tena? These holy people. These are the Christians that have received the Lord during the tribulation. And they are upholding the salvation of Christ. And they are worshipping the Lord. And they are standing on the word of God. Then he attacks them and conquers them. And they cry out 
under the altar in heaven chini ya madhabahu mbinguni at the break of the fifth seal katika kuvunjwa kwa lakiri ya tano how long hadi lini bwana how long hadi lini sovereign lord bwana mwenyezi holy and true mtakatifu na wa kweli until you judge the inhabitants of the earth hadi utakapowahukumu waishio duniani who have abused us ambao wametutukana and avenge our blood na kisha kulipiza kisasi kwa how long lord hadi lini bwana shall we wait for retribution tutangoja kwa ajili ya kulipiza haki how long lord kwa hadi lini bwana shall your name be slandered jina lako How long Lord? Before you establish your name down there. And then the sixth seal is like an answer to that prayer. That boy. The way he answers. He blasts the heavenly bodies. And he strikes the earth with a global earthquake. It is tremendous here. And it was given authority. Over every tribe dedia kila kabila people jama, language lugha and nation nataifa. do you understand why jesus has to break the sixth seal je mwelewa kwa nini yesu lazima avunje la kiria sita we know that it is jesus tujua ya kwamba ni yesu in revelation chapter 5 verse 9 kwenye kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya 5 mstari wa 9 he says the following anasema yafuatayo in verse 9 kwenye mstari wa 9 revelation chapter 5 9 kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya 5 mstari wa 9 He says Anasema Again I need to go to Revelation give me a moment Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 Ufunuo sura ya 5 mstari wa 9 He says the following Anasema yafuatayo He says Anasema And they sang a new song Nao wakaimba wimbo mpya saying Wakisema You are worthy Wewe wastahili to take the scroll Kukitoa gombo and to open na kuzivunja lakiri zake because you were slain kwa sababu wewe ulichinjwa and with your blood na damu yako you purchased for god ukamnunulia mungu persons watu from every tribe kutoka katika kila kabila every language kila lugha every people kila jamaa a nation na kila taifa somebody is trying to counterfeit jesus tu anaenda kumuiga yesu Someone is trying to counterfeit him. Mtu anajaribu kumfanyia ubandia. This is absolutely outrageous. Hii ni ya kukasirisha kabisa. Do you understand why the Lord has to answer? Je, muelewa kwa nini Mungu lazima ajibu? Why the wrath of the lamb? Ni kwa nini ghadhabu ya mwanakondoo? Ni lazima inuliwe. And people are running here. Na watu wanakimbia hapa. In a row. Katika mstari. Kings. Waki princesses. Wafalme na wakuu wote. Generals. Watu majenerali. Watu wakuu. They are running out. Wanakimbia. To enter caves. Kuingia katika mapango. Why are you now running? Je, kwa nini sasa mnakimbia? You have been celebrating. Mmekuwa mkisherehekea. And you have been saying. Na mmekuwa mkisema. There is none like the beast. Ya kwamba hakuna mtu kama mnyama. You have been asking. Mmekuwa mkiuliza. Who can wage war against the beast? Ya kwamba nani awezayo kufanya vita dhidi ya mnyama? And then the Lord answers. Kisha Bwana anajibu. And everybody else has to run and flee. Na mtu yeyote yule lazima akimbia na kutoroka. And hide. Na kufa. Na kujificha. And hide. Na kujificha. What a tremendous time on the earth. Ni wakati wa kutisha namna gani katika dunia. And that's why the coronavirus. Ndio sababu virusi vya corona. The prophecy I gave. Una bini iliyoupeana. I tied it. Niliungamanisha. To the coming of the Messiah. Kwa kuja kwa Masia. I tied it. Niliungamanisha. To your citizenship in heaven. Kwa uraia wako mbinguni. Because I said. Kwa sababu nilisema Make sure Hakikisha that your name ya kwamba jina lako is found written in the Lamb's book of life. Lipatikane limeandikwa kwenye kitabu cha uzima cha mwana kondoo. Because things become murama. Things go bad here. Kwa the sababu earth. vitu vinaenda murama hapa duniani. Do you understand why God breaks the sixth seal? Je, muelewa kwa nini Mungu anavunja lakiri ya sita? The Lamb of God. 
My Lord breaks the sixth seal. Because so there is too much outrage. It is actually outrageous on the earth. How can you counterfeit the Messiah? And he goes on to say this tremendous he is, he is a tyrant. He is a terrible dictator. And he kills God's people. He is a powerful leader who is swift and cunning and he is shrewd with the agility of a leopard. He says Anasema, that he comes back to life ya kwamba anarudi tena katika uzima to counterfeit the messiah ili kumkufuru kumfanyia ubandia masia and based on deception na kuzingatia udanganyifu and lies na uongo he counterfeits the miracles of jesus anaziiga na kuzifanyia ubandia miujiza za yesu and then he blasphemes the Lord. And he claims to be God. Hey, hey. We must open up here. Push the sun away. Push the moon here. Push the stars. I want to get to him. How can you say you are God? When Jehovah is listening. He tears heaven. And he comes blazing fire. Pushing neutron stars. To blast the cities. And they run the same worshippers of the devil. They now run. They, they acknowledge the throne. Na wanakimbia wale ambao wamekuwa kimwabudu shetani wanakimbia na sasa kutambua enzi. Now they, they said the throne. Hasa wanasema that he that sits on the throne. Hey. You are even aware of that now. Wanasema kwamba yeye aketie katika enzi. Eh, hey, mwajua hiyo pia. You, you are saying that you have your king, you have your God here. Mlikuwa mnasema ya kwamba mna mfalme wenu hapa, mna Mungu wenu hapa. The reason the lamb Sababu mwana kondo opens the sixth seal. Anavunja la kiria sita. And all the inhabitants of the earth na watu wote waishio katika dunia will worship the beast. Wata mwabudu mnyama. Hey! Hey! How? Vipi? A global satanic revival. Uvu vio wakishatani wa ulimangu wote mzima. Get me a sword. I need to fight. Give me neutron stars in my hand. We need to blast some cities here. That people may fear our God. Hey. Hey. He says all the inhabitants of the earth. They worship Satan. Do you understand the battle? Do you understand why the Lord is using the coronavirus to warn you to get out of here? Believe Jesus. Be born again. Be holy. Be ready so that the rapture will take you. Je, mnaelewa kwa nini Bwana anatumia virusi vya corona kuwaonya ya kwamba endokeni hapa okokeni mpokeni Yesu tubuni ili kwamba mpate kuingia katika unyakuzi. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 Verse 4 He says the following You can read it quite a bit He says the following Verse 4 He says He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God Yeye atapingana na kujitukuza juu ya kila kitu kiitwa cha Mungu. And is worshiped. Au kinachoabudiwa. So that he sets himself up. Ili kujiweka juu. In the temple of my God. Katika hekalu la Mungu wangu. Proclaiming himself to be God. Ak How is that possible? Akijitangaza mwenyewe kuwa ndiye Mungu. Je, hiyo yawezekanaje? Do you understand why God comes out? Je, mnaelewa kwa nini Mungu anajitokeza? He says no. Anasema hapana. 
On this one I want to fight. Katika hili nataka kupigana. I want to go down. I want to fight. Ninataka kushuka chini nataka kupigana. Release me. Let me go. I must go. Wacha nienda, wacha nienda nataka kwenda. On this one I need to fight. Katika hili nataka kupigana. I must fight. Ni lazima nipigane. The provocation. Kule kukasirishwa. He even put himself. Hata anajiweka. In the temple. Katika hekalu. Call himself God. Na kujiita ndiye Mungu. Ai. That is the highest blackmail. Hiyo ndio makufuru ya hali ya juu kabisa. Ai. And you will be worshiped. Naye ataabudiwa. People will worship him. Watu watamuabudu. He desecrates the temple of the Lord. Yeye anachafua madhabahu ya hekalu la Mungu. Matthew 24. Mathayo 24. Do you understand why the Lord has to break the sixth seal? Je? Mwelewa ni kwa nini Bwana lazima avunje la kiria sita? And come blazing fire. Na ashuke akiwaka moto. Matthew 24. Mathayo 24. Verses 15 to 21. Mstari 15 hadi 21. He says. Anasema, so when you see standing in the holy place. Hivyo mtakapoona lile nilikisimama mahali patakatifu. The abomination. Chukizo that causes desolation spoken of through prophet daniel the prophet daniel let the reader understand then lord let the, those who are in judea flee to the mountains let no one on the rooftop go down to take anything out of the house let no one in the field go back to get the clock how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and the nursing mother meaning cannot run that much and he says Again. Tena. How dreadful it will be. Itakuwa ya kutisha namna gani? In those days. Kwa siku hizo. For pregnant women. Kwa wenye mimba. And nursing mothers. Na wenye watoto wachanga. Pray that your flight. Ombeni ili kukimbia kwenu. Will not take place in the winter. Kusio wakati wa baridi. Or on Shabbat. Au siku ya sabato. For then there will be a great tribulation. Kwa mana wakati huo kutakuwa na dhiki kuu. A great distress. And equal from the beginning of the world. Until then. And never to be equaled again. Ay. 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 How? VP. How can he do this? As though there is no God. Kana kwamba hakuna Mungu out of this kutokana na hii this outrage hii hasira and provocation na huku kugadhabishwa the lord jehovah my god bwana mungu mungu wangu he opens the curtains of heaven anafungua pazia za mbingu and he comes rushing blazing fire na anakuja kwa kasi kama na moto unaowaka to answer kujibu you control the global economy ataendeleza na kudhibiti uchumi wa ulimwengu wote mzima revelation 13 Ufunuo 16 and 17 16 The reason the sixth seal has to be broken Sababu ambayo la kiria sita lazima ivunjwe Revelation 13 Ufunuo 16 and 17 na He says Anasema It was forced to speak great and small. it was forced to speak Alilazimisha kuongea So sorry sorry it says it 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 also forced all people Pia akamlazimisha kila mmoja Can we read 15 so I can tell you what was in my heart Je tusome 15 ili kwamba niwaambie kile ambacho kilikuwa katika moyo wangu The second beast was given power Akapewa uwezo to give breath to the image of the first beast Wa kuipa pumzi ile sanamu ya yule mnyama wa kwanza Do you understand why the biggest clash is really between this prophet speaking with you and the second beast. Je, sasa mwaelewa kwa nini mapigano makali sana yako baina ya hawa manabii wawili wa kutisha wazungumzao pamoja nanyi na yule mnyama wa pili? Because kwa sababu in that vision katika hayo maono 
the Lord tells me to go to the church. Bwana ananiambia niende kwa kanisa. And when I reach the church. Na wakati nilipofika kwa kanisa. I just gained contact. Nilipokuwa nimekutana tu nao. They became very holy. Wakafanyika watakatifu sana. I could see they became holy when the dressings changed of the women they were now worshiping well. Ningeliona ya kwamba walifanyika watakatifu sana na mavazi ya wanawake yakabadilika walikuwa naabudu kwa njia takatifu. There is a junction there. Kuna makutano hapo. One road goes this way, one goes left. Njia moja inaenda upande huu nyingine inaenda kushoto. So when I just gained contact with the church. Kwa hivyo nilipokutana tu na kanisa. The Lord said go tell them the Messiah is about to come. Bwana aliniambia niende niwaambie kwamba Masia anakuja. Just gain contact like this they disappeared. Nilipokutana tu na wao hivi wakaotoweka. And then I heard globally people say wow people have disappeared where are people gone. Kisha nikasikia kote kote ulimwenguni watu wakisema kwamba wao watu wameondoka je watu wameenda wapi? But there is a radio station I was hearing and I can see two people in that station. Lakini kuna station ya radio ambayo nilikuwa ninasikia na ninaweza kuona watu wawili katika hicho kituo cha radio. One of them is wearing a white shirt without a tie and untucked untucked i give, i see so much detail moja wao amevalia shati nyeupe akiwa bila tai na pia hajaweka shati lake ndani and they are telling the world no 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 the rapture has happened it is the rapture no, the rapture jesus has taken the church na wanaambia ulimwengu ya, kwana, ya kwamba hapana hapana unyakuzi umetendeka ni unyakuzi Yesu amelichukua kanisa and so the people are going to police stations to report they have lost their daughters they have lost their sons they have lost their husbands they have lost their wives there was so much confusion globally na kwa hivyo watu walikuwa wanaenda katika vituo vya polisi kuripoti ya kwamba wamewapoteza mabinti zao wana wao wake zao na waume wao hivyo basi kulikuwaepo na kuchanganyikiwa kwingi kabisa kote kote ulimwenguni the pilot of the aircraft who was holy who was taken the planes crashed rubani wa ndege ambaye alichukuliwa ambaye alikuwa mtakatifu ile ndege ikaanguka many things happened the trains where the pilot was born again and and and, and holy that taken away and the trains crashed many things happened vitu vingi vilitendeka kabisa ile gari moshi ambapo yule dereva wake alikuwa mtakatifu na kisha akachukuliwa ile gari moshi ikaenda na kugongana vitu vingi vilitendeka then the lord now takes me to the left there's a big shopping mall a supermarket kisha bwana sasa kanipeleka upande wa kushoto kuna duka kubwa kabisa linalouza and then i see this guy with you will be a, this the false prophet will be, will be a military person Of course, of course we know the antichrist is military all this for military but the false prophet is military I've even seen his heart his military heart this 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 one here and like this 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 the heart Huyo nabii wa uongo atakuwa mtu wa kijeshi nimeona kofia yake ya kijeshi And because of his rank the general's rank he has that those ngano I think is wheat or what those flowers on in front here na kwa sababu ya kicheo chake ile cheo ya majenerali ana ile uwa pale ya ngano and then na kwa hivyo the lord takes me to where he and someone are talking to a lady bwana ananipeleka mahali ambapo yeye na mtu wanazungumza na mwanadada you go like this and then the tills are there for paying Unaenda namna hii kisha mahali pa kulipia pako pale. And the exit on the other side. Na kisha mahali pa kutokea upande ule mwingine. And so when the Lord brings me there. Na kwa hivyo Bwana anaponileta hapo. I can see his skin complexion. Ninaweza ona rangi yake ya ngozi. I can see so much about him almost tell what part of the world he's going to come from. Ninaweza kuona mengi sana kuhusiana na yeye inayoweza sema ni sehemu gani ya dunia natoka. I hear him asking this lady. Ninamsikia akimuuliza huyu mwanadada. Didn't I see you pastoring a church? Je, siku kuona ukilichunga kanisa lolote? And she said no. Na nasema hapana. Me, me no, no, no. Mimi, mimi hapana. I think you are confused. Nafikiria umechanganyikiwa. I think you're talking about somebody else. Nafikiria unazungumza kuhusu mtu mwingine. How come I really think you are a pastor? How come I have a great feeling you are a pastor? Je, ni kwa nini nashawishika kabisa ya kwamba wewe ulikuwa mchungaji? Said, no, I'm not. Akasema hapana, sivyo. And you don't have the mark. Na hauna alama. Yes, you are not a pastor. Wewe si mchungaji. Did I not see you pastor in a church? Je, siku kuona ukilichunga kanisa? She refused totally. The Lord brings me there say here. Akakataa kabisa. Bwana ananileta hapo ili kwamba nikaweze kusikiliza. Then you are not a Christian. So no, 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 I'm not. Wewe si mkristo. Akasema hapana, hapana, mimi sio. The, but the Lord makes me know that she is a pastor. Lakini Bwana ananisabisha ni juu ya kwamba yeye ni mchungaji. She was was a pastor. Alikuwa mchungaji. And then he told her to go there and get the mark. Kisha akamwambia aende pale na kupata hiyo alama ya mnyama. I see her picking her foods and she checks out I think the third till. Kisha ninamuona akichukua akilipia vitu vyake na kisha anaondoka. Food. 
na kisha namuona kilipia chakula yake na kisha naondoka pale na kisha napita it will be so bad itakuwa mbaya sana that many people ya kwamba watu wengi will reject jesus watamkataa yesu many people watu wengi will abandon jesus watamkana yesu so if the prophecy of the coronavirus kwa hivyo iwapo unabiwa virusi vya corona that has now been fulfilled ambao sasa umetimilizwa upon the face of the earth juu ya uso wa dunia is a warning to this generation ni onyo kwa kizazi hiki that our head is bad ya kwamba huku mbele ni kubaya that receive the lord now ya kwamba mpokeeni bwana sasa be born again now kuokoke sasa and be taken up in the rapture kuliwe katika unyakuzi then please hivyo basi tafadhali listen sikiliza and pay heed na umakinike that you may be secured ili kwamba upate kuwa salama into the safety of heaven katika usalama wa mbinguni because otherwise kwa sababu la sivyo it will be bad itakuwa mbaya very bad mbaya sana the reason the sixth seal is broken sababu ambayo la kiria sita inavunjwa and so you see here na kwa hivyo unaona hapa given authority akipewa mamlaka and he says na anasema and he was given authority na akapewa uwezo over every tribe juu ya kila kabila people watu language Luga, and nation na utaifa, and all the inhabitants of the earth na watu wote waishio duniani they worship the beast watamwabudu huyo mnyama whose names those whose names have not been written in the book of life wale ambao majina yao hayakoandikwa kwenye kitabu cha uzima of the lamb who was slain from the creation of the world cha mwana kondoo aliyechinjwa tangu kuumbwa kwa ulimwengu do you understand je mwaelewa why at the prophecy of the coronavirus ni kwa nini katika unabii wa virusi vya corona december 1 2015 tarehe moja desemba mwaka 2015 i say nilisema this one here ya kwamba hii hapa when is fulfilled wakati takapotimia It speaks about inazungumza kuhusu make sure hakikisha that you are named ya kwamba jina lako are in the book of life niko katika kitabu cha uzima kwa maneno mengine make sure hakikisha you repent unatubu and receive jesus na kumpokea yesu be born again uokoke be holy uwe mtakatifu baptized uwe ubatizwe righteous mwenye haki garment of righteousness vazi la uhaki wearing it ukivalia and using it na ukitumia because time kwa sababu wakati this prophecy of the coronavirus unabii huu wa virusi vya corona the words of my tongue maneno ya ulimi wangu when i said a big disease niliposema kwamba gonjwa kubwa sana coming out of asia nikitokea asia when i say niliposema it will cause a distress a big distress ya kwamba italeta dhiki kubwa kabisa i said there will be no equipment nilisema hakutakuepo na vifaa look there are no ventilators angalia kuna vifaa vya kuingiza hewa there are no masks hakuna masks there are no gloves hakuna glove and i said nikasema there will be need for culture ya kwamba kutakuepo na hitaji la kufanya uchunguzi culture is to do experiments to research kule uchunguzi ni kufanya utafiti and fi- look for a cure na kutafuta kinga look at how all the laboratories of the world are in a big run right now everyone is working culturing looking for the cure looking for vaccine looking for sequence angalia jinsi ambavyo maabara ya ulimwengu wote mzima sasa hivi wako mbioni kila mmoja akitafuta ile kinga kila mmoja akitafuta tiba kila mmoja akitafuta ni mbinu gani he say anasema the details i gave vipengeni lipeana and i said hospitals will be flooded na nikasema kwamba hospitali zitafurika and i mentioned india by name nikataja india kwa jina ai ai 1.3 billion people quarantined watu bilioni 1.3 wamefungiwa sema vizuri wanaweza fikia unasema milioni watu bilioni 1.3 wamezuiliwa the reason he has to open the sixth seal sababu ambayo lazima aivunje la kiria sita because kwa sababu the antichrist pinga kristo he controls commerce yeye anaendeleza anadhibiti biashara he controls global commerce yeye ndiye anayeendeleza biashara ya ulimwengu wote mzima And I said Revelation 13:16-17. Na nikasema ufunuo 13:16 na 17. You see what he says? 
Waona kile ambacho anasema? It also forced people great and small. Pia akamlazimisha kila mmoja mdogo na mkubwa. Rich and poor. Tajiri na maskini. Free and slave. Mtu huru na mtumwa. To receive a mark on their right hands. Atiwe chapa kwenye mkono wake wa kuume. And on their foreheads. Au kwenye paji lake la uso. So that they could not buy. Ili kwamba mtu yeyote asiweze kununua. Or sell. Wala kuuza. They that had so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. You understand why the sixth seal has to be broken? So the people of God cannot buy food and most of them like this pastor here the lady na wengi wao kama vile huyu mchungaji hapa mwanadamu in this dream katika ndoto hii they have to renounce jesus lazima wamkatae yesu so god has to come out hivyo basi bwana lazima ajitokeze to have his answer ili kwamba kupata jibu lake have his say ili kwamba kupata naye aseme another reason sababu nyingine why kwa nini the seal Lakiri. The sixth seal Lakiri ya sita. has to be broken. Lazima ivunjwe. It's because Ni kwa sababu this character here huyo mtu hapa the antichrist Mpinga Kristo will attempt to destroy Israel. Atajaribu kuiharibu Israel. So God has to come out. Hivyo Mungu lazima atoke nje. How dare you touch? Jeu wazaje kujaribu kuuza. God is my own. Kile ambacho ni changu mwenyewe. This one I cannot allow you. Huyo siwezi kukuruhusu. He has to come out. Lazima ajitokeze. Revelation. Ufunuo. Chapter 12. Sura ya 12. Just next door. Ambaye inafuata tu karibu mlangoni. A great sign appeared in heaven. Kukaonekana ishara kuu mbinguni. A woman clothed with the sun. Pale kwa na mwanamke aliyevikwa jua. With the moon under her feet. Na mwezi ukiwa chini ya miguu yake. And a crown. Na taji. Of 12 stars on her head. Ya nyota 12 ilikuwa kichwani mwake. That is Israel. The 12 stars. Hizo nyota 12. Those are the 12 tribes of Israel. Hayo ni makabila 12 ya Israeli. This woman here. Huyu mwanamke hapa. And he says. Na anasema. She was pregnant and cried out. Alikuwa na mimba naye akalia. In great pain. Kwa uchungu mkuu. As she was about to give birth. Kwa kuwa alikuwa karibu kuzaa. Then another sign appeared. Kisha ishara nyingine ikaonekana. An enormous red dragon Likaonekana joka kubwa kabisa jekundu with seven heads lenye vichwa saba and ten horns na pembe kumi and seven crowns on his head na taji saba katika vichwa vyake always trying to counterfeit Jesus kila wakati akijaribu kumuiga Yesu Revelation 12 verse 4 ufunuo Yohana sura 12 mstari wa 4 his tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky mkia wake ukakokota theluthi ya nyota zote angani and flung them onto the earth na kuziangusha katika nchi the dragon stood in front of the woman ndipo lile joka likasimama mbele ya huyo mwanamke who was about to give birth aliyekuwa karibu kuzaa so that he may devour her child ili lipate kumla huyo mtoto wake the moment he was born mara tu atakapozaliwa she gave birth to a son yule mwanamke akamzaa mtoto mwanaume a male child mwana mwanaume who will rule the nations atakayetawala mataifa with an iron scepter hallelujah kwa fimbo yake ya uchuma hallelujah and a child kisha mtoto huyo was snatched up akanyakuliwa to god na kupelekwa kwa Mungu and to his throne na katika kiti chake cha the woman fled yule mwanamke akakimbia into the wilderness nyikani to a place prepared for her ambako Mungu alikuwa amemtayarishia by God himself na Mungu mwenyewe where she might be taken care of ili apate kutunzwa huko for 1260 days kwa muda wa siku 1260 then war broke out in heaven basi palikuwa na vita mbinguni Michael and his angels fought against the dragon Mikaeli na malaika zake wakapigana na hilo joka and the dragon and his angels fought back na lojoka pamoja na malaika zake likapigana nao. Then he was not strong enough. Lakini lile joka na malaika zake hawakushinda. And they lost their place in heaven. 
Hawakuwa na nguvu hivi wakapoteza nafasi yao mbinguni. Meaning there is no apostles in heaven. Kumaanisha kwamba hakuna mwanguko imbani mbinguni. There is no sin in heaven. Hakuna dhambi mbinguni. There is no room for the apostles you see in this church right now ha- currently globally. The present day church you see now. Hakuna nafasi kwa ajili ya mwanguko ambao tunaona sasa hivi katika kanisa la kisasa hapa. If you want to go to heaven? Iwapo unataka kwenda mbinguni? This is the scripture that tells you stop the apostasy. Hili ndilo andiko la kuambia ya kwamba achana na mwanguko wa imani. The great dragon was hurled down. Lile joka kule katupwa chini. The ancient serpent. Yule nyoka wa zamani. Called the devil. Aitwaye ibilisi. Or Satan. Au shetani. Who leads the whole world astray. Au potoshaye ulimwengu ulimwengu wote. He was hurled to the earth. Akatupwa chini duniani. And his angels with him. Yeye pamoja na malaika zake. Then I heard a loud voice. Kisha nikasikia sauti kuu. In heaven say. Mbinguni ikisema. Now have come sasa umekuja the salvation wokovu and the power na uweza and the kingdom of our god na ufalme wa Mungu wetu and the authority of his messiah na mamlaka ya Kristo wake for the accuser of our brothers kwa kuwa mshtaki wa ndugu zetu and sisters na dada zetu who accuses them before our god yeye anayewashtaki mbele za Mungu wetu day and night usiku na mchana has been hurled down ametupwa chini they triumphed over him na wakamshinda by the blood of the lamb kwa damu ya mwana kondoo and the word of their testimony na kwa neno la ushuhuda wao they did not love their lives wala wao hawakuyapenda maisha yao so much as to shrink from death hata kufa do you remember the fifth seal je mkumbuka la kiri ya tano those ones now that die the christians that die How wa Kristo ambao sasa walikufa. They rather be killed than renounce Jesus. Afadhali wauawe kuliko kumkana Yesu. He says verse 12. Anasema mstari wa 12. There are for rejoice. Kwa hiyo furahini. You heavens. Ninyi mbingu. And you who dwell in them. Na wote wakao humo. But woe unto the earth. Lakini ole wenu nchi. And the sea. Na bahari. Because the devil has gone down to you. Kwa maana huyo shetani ameshuka kwenu. He is filled with fury. Akiwa sasa amejaga dhabu. Because he knows that his time is short. Kwa sababu anajua ya kuwa muda wake ni mfupi. What a beautiful statement. Ni kauli ya kupendeza namna gani? Meaning even the great tribulation. Kumaanisha hata dhiki ku has been shortened. Imefupishwa. So the devil is trying to walk very fast because he knows his time is over. Hivyo shetani He's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Hivyo shetani anajaribu kufanya kazi haraka kabisa kwa sababu anajua ya kwamba wakati wake umekwisha anaenda kutupwa kwa ziwa la moto. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth. Lile joka lilipoona kuwa limetupwa chini duniani. He pursued the woman. Lilimfuatilia yule mwanamke. Who had given birth to a male child. Aliyekuwa amemzaa mtoto mwanaume. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Lakini huyo mwanamke akapewa mabawa mawili ya tai mkubwa. So that she might fly to a place prepared for her. Kusudi aweze kuruka mpaka mahali palipo tayarishwa kwa ajili yake. In the wilderness. Huko nyikani. Where she be taken care of ambako atatunzwa for a time kwa wakati times na nyakati and half a time na nusu out of the serpent's reach wakati ambako wakati ambapo huyo nyoka hawezi kumfikia then his mouth then from his mouth the serpent hallelujah then from his mouth from his mouth ndipo kutoka kinywani mwake the serpent spewed out water lile joka likamwaga maji like a river kama mto take the woman ili kumfikia huyo mwanamke na kumkumba in a torrent kama mafuriko i always think that this is the nuclear war kila wakati mimi hufikiria kwamba hivi ni vita vya nuclear either nuclear or chemical either nuclear ama ya kimekali that they try to use to reach at israel ambayo wanajaribu kutumia ili kumfikia israeli then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river ndipo kutoka katika kinywa chake lile joka likamwaga maji kama mto ili kumfikia huyo mwanamke and sweep her away with the torrent na kumkumba kama mafuriko but the earth opened the earth helped the woman lakini nchi ikamsaidia huyo mwanamke by opening his mouth kwa kufungua kinywa chake and swallowing the river na kuumeza huo mto that the dragon had spewed ambayo huyo nyoka alikuwa ameutoa out of his mouth kinywani mwake then the dragon was enraged kisha lile joka likapatwa na hasira at the woman kwa ajili ya huyo mwanamke and he went off likaondoka to wage war ili 
kupigana vita against the rest of our offspring na watoto waliosalia wa huyo mwanamke those who keep god's commandment yani wale wanaozitii amri za Mungu and hold fast na kushika their testimony about jesus ushuhuda wao wa Yesu Kristo this is very powerful hii ni nguvu kabisa so the new israel you see hivyo basi israel pia ambayo mnaona if you read galatians ukisoma wa galatia the church kanisa so he's saying anasema that israel is secured ya kwamba israel inaondolewa salama totally secured by the lord inasalimishwa sana na bwana and then halafu the serpent now goes out to the christians sasa yule shetani lile joka linawaendea wa kristo butchers them na kuwaua so blessed people kwa hivyo watu wabarikiwa if the lord is warning this generation iwapo bwana anakionya hiki kizazi using the corona virus akitumia virusi vya corona the rider of the pale horse panda farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu tell you kuambia that look ya kwamba tazameni the horsemen of the apocalypse panda farasi wa farasi wa kiunabii the horsemen of the apocalypse wapanda farasi wa farasi za majira ya kiunabii they have begun their ministry wameanza huduma yao that means hiyo inamaanisha soon the rapture will take place ya kwamba hivi karibuni unyakuzi unaenda kutendeka soon the messiah is going to come and take the church hivi karibuni masiya anakuja na kulichukua kanisa and then their ministry will continue in the tribulation na kisha huduma zao zitaendelea katika dhiki because that's where it belongs kwa sababu hapo ndipo inaendelezwa and if the lord is saying na iwapo bwana anasema that this coronavirus ya kwamba hivi virusi vya corona death 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 vifo 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 distress diki people locked in their homes watu wamefungiwa katika manyumba zao cannot go to office hawawezi kwenda ofisini cannot fly hawawezi kupaa dread tishio all over the earth kote kote duniani if this is a sign iwapo hii ni ishara that soon things are going to get worse. Ya kwamba hivi karibuni mambo yanaenda kuwa mrama. For those that don't receive Christ. Kwa wale ambao hawampokei Yesu. Then I want to give you this opportunity to receive the Lord. Kwa hivyo nataka kuwapatia nafasi hii kumpokea Bwana. That when we come back. Ya kwamba tutakaporudi. We can continue. Tunaweza kuendelea. But I want to give you this chance. Nataka kukupatia nafasi hii. That you may take the Lord. Ili kwamba umpokee Bwana. If that is you lift up your hands wherever you are in that living room. Iwapo huyo ni wewe inua mikono yako popote ulipo katika hiyo sebule. Say mighty Lord Jesus. Sema ye Bwana Yesu mkuu. I receive you today in my heart. Ninakupokea leo katika moyo wangu. As my Lord. Kama Bwana wangu. And my Savior. Na mwokozi wangu. And I repent of all sin. Na ninatubu kwa ajili ya dhambi zote and accept you na kukubali wewe to transform my life uyabadilishe maisha yangu please fill me with the holy spirit tafadhali nijaze kwa roho mtakatifu and establish holiness in my life na uimarishe utakatifu katika maisha yangu establish righteousness in my heart imarisha uhaki katika moyo wangu and command my steps na uamrishe hatua zangu za miguu towards the glorious kingdom of heaven kuelekea katika ufalme wa utukufu wa mbinguni in the mighty name of jesus katika jina kuu la yesu today i am born again leo hii nimeokoka if you have said that prayer share with somebody call somebody Iwap- celebrate with somebody iwapo umesema ombi hilo mshiriki na mtu mpigie mtu simu ushiriki na mtu celebrate with somebody usherehekee na mtu that is the biggest decision you can ever make hiyo ni uamuzi mkuu kabisa ambao unaweza kufanya father in the mighty name of jesus baba katika jina kuu la yesu i bless these people ninawabariki watu hawa who have received jesus today ambao wamempokea yesu leo hii that you will totally seal them ya kwamba kikamilifu utawatia muhuri with the holy spirit na roho mtakatifu for your glorious kingdom kwa ajili ya ufalme wako wa utukufu mbinguni I ask you my father. Nami ninakuuliza baba yangu. To now offend for them. Sasa ukawatwalie. Defend them. Ukawatetee. And keep them away from the sin of this world. Na ukawahifadhi mbali kutoka kwa dhambi za ulimwengu huu. That they may be a living testimony of the goodness of your salvation. Ili wawe ushuhuda ulio hai wa wema wa wokovu wako. That they may be a powerful testimony. Ili wapate kuwa ushuhuda wa nguvu. Of the power of the cross of jesus ya nguvu za msalaba wa yesu na blood of jesus na damu ya yesu i bless you nimewabariki in the mighty name of jesus katika jina kuu la yesu so shall be amen
Ndiyo hivyo utakavyo kuwa amina. I'll see you then tomorrow. Nitawaona kesho. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina kuu la Yesu. Toda shalom. Toda shalom. Toda toda. Toda toda. Toda raba. Toda raba. Thank you. Asanteni.